There's a terrible myth out there that structure and discipline takes away your freedom. This is false. Discipline and structure applied properly gives you more freedom. All right, what am I talking about? Well, when you exercise regularly, when you follow a healthy diet, yeah, you might think to yourself, I'm not as free, I can't just do whatever I want, but here's the reality. A fit and healthy you is more free to enjoy more things. You have more energy. You got better mobility. You got a better libido. You have a better outlook on life. The truth is the right kind of discipline, the right kind of structure makes you more free. I, uh, I got this from Bishop Barron's talk that we heard at ARC because he talked about, he used the best example I've ever heard in my life. So he was, now the talk was based off of how Western societies value freedom so much. And he says, a lot of people think freedom means I just do whatever I want. And he goes, the truth is uh, that actually is constraining. And he uses the example of language. He says when he would uh, was studying in France, before he really learned the French language, he was constrained by his inability to use a language so he couldn't express himself. He couldn't express his emotions, his thoughts, couldn't debate and have these great talks with the people around him until he disciplined himself, followed the rules of the French language, and was able to develop a vocabulary that freed him to be able to express himself. And I immediately thought about, thought about health and fitness. Like, how many times people are like, oh, you got to eat healthy? Like, that's so restrictive. You can't just do whatever you want. Or you got to work out in the morning every day. Like, don't you want to just like do whatever you want? I like to be free. But we know that if you're unhealthy, you're not as free. You're just not. You're, you're far more constrained by your lack of discipline and structure than you are by the discipline and structure itself. Right. Yeah. If we just lean into our impulses, what does that look like? It's like me sitting on the couch, me uh, doing bare minimal things physically because my body just feels good there. I'm like getting entertained. I'm playing video games. I'm just eating and consuming, uh, you know, whatever I'm sort of craving at the time. But, you know, it's not going to benefit me in any regard in terms of getting up and doing things and being active. And then and your health goes down and, your and now you're really limited. Deteriorates. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a farce to think that it's just like, I could just do whatever I want and, and, uh, you know, not put any sort of work in that direction. Yeah, I, totally. I feel like it's connected to, um, sacrifice and delayed gratification too. Totally. Right. Yeah, so totally. last night I had a, a Helen interviewed me on the, the Facebook forum, right. The one that we do every once a month or whatever. And somebody came on there and they are, they're an ex, uh, uh, baker, right? So they, their whole life, they've been like baking sweet goods and they, everybody knows I have a sweet tooth. Right. And she's like, you know, how do you resist doing that? And I said, well, I really don't. I said, yesterday I had a cup of ice cream, you know, so I, I indulge and enjoy things like that, but I also have disciplined myself and sacrificed for decades now of training consistently, building muscle, understanding my own metabolism, knowing how to turn the knobs right away. And because of that, it's given me this freedom of, hey, if I really feel yeah. like I want some ice cream today, I'm going to have it. And I'm yeah. not going to feel constrained and tell myself, no, I can't. It's like, hey, of course I can. One, one cup of ice cream is not going to make me You'll fat. bounce back. It's yeah. not going to make me unhealthy. But, the, but so many people ask that question when they haven't made the sacrifice. They haven't disciplined themselves for an extended period of time. It's just, And I gave the investment analogy that I gave on the podcast the other day which is like, I've been investing for years. And so to go out and splurge and enjoy a little bit of the spoils, I can get away with and I can enjoy. Yes. Going to work, uh, you know, getting either a good education or applying yourself, making more money. That's freeing. Whereas someone might be like, oh, you got to wake up every day and work for right. 10 hours or whatever. Mm -hmm. I like to just do whatever I want. That's, <laughs> that's that, restrictive. That, that restriction, yes. that discipline, that sacrifice ends up giving you more freedom. Totally. And that's the same thing with like that question is that, you know, it's if you've only strung two weeks of eating good in your entire life together and never been to the gym a month or two months straight, you really haven't earned that freedom yet for yourself. And like, and so right now my answer to you is to go put that discipline in, go make that, it'll be worth it. It gets better. The more, the more you allow, you, you treat, you discipline yourself and you sacrifice the more freedoms that you will have in the future. In marketing, what do they call it? Trading dimes for quarters. So mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, I, I'm giving you a dime. I'm going to get a quarter back, right? That's what that ends up doing. I have a, I know somebody who was struggling with uh, diabetes 
when we were younger. So they had diabetes and they always struggled with diet and they, they got so they would be upset about like, oh, I can't eat certain things. I'm just going to do it anyway. Enjoy myself. Like it's so restricting, right? He felt controlled. Well, fast forward, you know, 25 years later, he can't eat anything now mm -hmm. that's a sweet because mm -hmm. it could kill him. Okay, that's yeah. how bad it's gotten. He's lost a couple digits as a result of it. So it's actually, um, it's a myth. It's misleading. The, the thought that being free means doing whatever you want without consequence is what you're trying to weigh against taking, uh, you know, smart, measured discipline and actions that lead to more freedom. The truth is there is no such thing as doing whatever you want with no potential consequence. The truth is what you're weighing out is these restrictions versus these restrictions. Would I like to make the choice to wake up and go exercise the way I want and not just sit around, do nothing versus do whatever I want, do nothing. And then later I can't even go up the stairs. I can't even go play with my kids. Right. I can't squat down because my knees hurt or worse. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's the real trade. So th the truth is when you have the right kind of structure and discipline, um, your life opens yeah. up. And I, and I want to say this because I know a lot of people have never experienced this. They look at somebody who has discipline um, in this in this realm, and they may think to themselves like, "Oh, like that, like yeah. that sucks. I want to eat whatever I want. Like, you got to get, you got to work out every day. Like, my God, like that requests so much structure. Like, I like to sit down and enjoy myself and watch TV. And what I'm trading is isn't worth it. Oh no, it's it's worth it because at some point, I'd rather restrict myself voluntarily." and we'll use the word restrict or discipline myself voluntarily versus involuntarily. I like to be able to choose my boundaries and my structure versus now I'm forced, right? So if I get up and make myself exercise, that's better than being forced to not move and sit because you can't. Well, because I think so that's, yeah, that's the hard part is like painting that vision, especially for coaches, uh, you know, with new clients, it's just everything in front of them looks so limiting and restrictive mm -hmm. and, um, it, it, it looks, it looks less appealing because it's, it's a bit of a lifestyle shock, right? It's, it's, and this is where it's our job to really kind of limit the amount, uh, that you're really presenting in front of them. So it doesn't seem like it's this like overwhelming, um, you know, radical sort of, uh, disciplinary change they need to make in their lifestyle. It's something like that they can step into and make, yeah. you know, like, like change one at a time. Uh, but the other side of that is so much, uh, so much more of an open uh, area to possibility of of all of these other things that, um, you, like, you know, you really want like, to pursue. I want, I want to travel more. I want to, you know, have more energy. I want to get up and play with my kids. I want, I want to do a lot more things. Like it, it opens up the possibility to that. Well, this is why I love the the investment analogy of it. I mean, same thing. When you when you first start, like, there's three friends, right? There's there's three of us that are really really close and. You know, and you and you start sacrificing and disciplining yourself to the the little bit when you first start coming up, right? I'm just making enough money to pay my bills. I'm not making a lot of money, but I have a little bit of left over. And you choose not to do some of these trips or buy that cool car or that those expensive or shoes. Work more hours, or right? More, oh, yeah, educate and, yourself. And, and and you and you sacrifice. And meanwhile, you have a friend. They're your two friends, and they're spending everything they got or even putting it on credit cards and it's just like man they just look like they're living the life and it's like here i am and it's like yeah but that that's only for a period of time in your life where you do yeah. that and the beauty is if you stay disciplined long enough there'll come a time when you've built enough investments that the passive income is so good that you could do all the things they did and some and not ever have to stress and worry and not owe anybody anything right because, the reward yeah it, so it gets better so as coaches and trainers i think it's important because we all, we all think, I think the early version of us think that we're going to motivate our people to be uh, passionate about working out as much as we do. You quickly find out that's not true. You yeah, quickly yeah. realize that like, that's oh, percentage. I'm a bit of an anomaly. Like I'm, a, I'm the 1% who actually likes to go to this gym yeah. and likes to make these sacrifices. Most people don't want to. They just want the end result. Yeah. They just want the fast cars. They just want the nice things. They want all those things, but they don't, they don't realize that there's an investment period that you you need to do. You need some sacrifice or some delayed gratification that needs to happen first. But hey, what's cool is that 
it's not going to be that way forever. It's not going to be so restrictive. You're not going to be able to enjoy those foods or that glass of wine or travel on trips and not have to worry about working out. Like that all comes. And, it really does. And, and, and even to add to that, I think the reframing, which which is what I'm trying to do, makes the process more enjoyable anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like if I'm sitting in this yeah. and doing this. shapes how you look at things. And all I'm thinking about is what I'm missing out. Mm -hmm. Like, oh man, I you know, everybody gets to eat whatever they want. And here I am trying to eat this meal that's, you know, healthy, right? If I just feel like that, well, yeah, it's going to suck. It's going to suck. But if I'm doing it and I'm like, wow, this is making me feel good. And then when I feel good, I have more energy and I can do all these other things. And, you know, this food isn't that bad. In fact, I know that's more palatable, but I actually don't, I'd rather not trade that palatability for what I'm getting right now. Oh, and then in the future, oh my God, I'm going to be so much more free to enjoy these things and do these other things. And it's, it, it is, a it is a, a reframing, right? Totally. Uh, it, also, I'm going to keep drawing this back to this in, investing analogy. Cause I do remember the transition that that was difficult for me too, of, you know, wanting to blow and spend money. And then you start to look at like, every time I, you build muscle or you get stronger in the gym, it's like you've built a little bit more passive income and you begin, yep. instead of being like, so focused on what you're not getting, what you don't have, you start focusing on like, oh wow, look at, I've got yep. now passively a hundred dollars coming in that I didn't have. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to get rich off of that, but that's a hundred dollars passively. I didn't have before, man, keep going. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to build some more. Oh wow. Now I have $300. I keep doing that. And then before you know, it, it's like, oh my God, I've created more passive income than the money I spend every single month. I don't even have to work. This is cruise control yeah, now. Talk about freedom. Right. Yeah. That, that's as, as free as it gets in that sense. And the same thing goes, you work hard enough, you build enough muscle, you build enough strength, you build enough discipline and habits around exercise and training and making good choices. You start to love the process. You start to enjoy all of it and it gets easier. You know, I met a guy, he just reminded me of this guy that I, I, I was a kid too. I was young. I was in my early twenties and I met this man and he was in his late sixties, ind totally independently wealthy. And I asked him how he built, his wealth. Like, what did you do for a living? Like, how does this work? He was a, uh, a bagger. And then he worked the cash register at a local grocery store, Lenardi's. You guys know where Lenardi's yeah, is. Yeah. So that's what he did. He literally worked in a grocery store. I'm like, how did you get all of these properties? He goes, I saved my money. I first bought one. I slowly built that one up. I bought another one. And it took him like, I don't know, like two and a half decades to build this portfolio. Yeah. Now here he is in his late sixties. He was totally wealthy. He had retired already earlier and he was totally fine. And he was working a job where he was making, he wasn't making a lot of money at Just all. Methodically disciplined and consistent. Right? Totally. Yeah. You know, it was, uh, I mean, that was amazing. The, that was the biggest, uh, I mean, he was a millionaire. I yeah. wish that, so Mike Matthews was the one that, that shared millionaire next door with me. And it's a, it's an old book. It's been around forever. And uh, unfortunately, I found it after I had already learned the hard way, right? And I wish that book, book was given to yeah. me in my early 20s yeah. because the <clears throat> biggest takeaway of all, and it's, got, it's full of takeaways and was a great book altogether, but the biggest one to me that was shocking was the thing, the common thread amongst all millionaires, what it was. It was not their profession, their inheritance, how hard they worked. It was literally their ability to discipline and live below their means. Yep. Mm -hmm. No matter what profession. What they was have. the average car? Like average millionaire owns a oh, car. Oh yeah, that's like thirty grand. Yeah, or yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, and the top models owned by multimillionaires were like Toyota, Honda, yeah, yeah. Nissan. And they weren't. You yeah, weren't the reliable. Yeah, it wasn't Lamborghini, Ferrari, like Rolls Royce. Cars, it wasn't yeah. what you would think. It wasn't all these high end cars. It's because the car and then the professions. You know, yeah. uh, engineer, teacher, a teacher. Was yeah, up there. yeah. So the, they're professions that range from thirty thousand dollars a year up to two hundred thousand dollars a year. None uh -huh. of the, and nothing in there was you know CEO VPs uh -huh. or these massive people that have huge incomes. It's like, but what they all learned to do was live significantly below their means and invest and over decades yep. built to the point you're making built this wealth. That is the most common thread amongst all mm -hmm. these millionaires. All right. Today's program giveaway for YouTube is the Super Bundle. A lot of programs. You can get that for free, but you have to enter. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We also have a sale going on. Our beginner strength training program, Maps Resistance, half off. And then Maps Prime Pro is also half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Speaking of wealth, I'm surprised you guys didn't notice my shirt. So, oh, I noticed it. Yeah. 
Did you see this, Adam? Uh, no, <laughs> the carnival king. So I get a text. Who made that for Hold you? Hold on a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get a text. Don't get. Excited I didn't even yet. see that. Okay. I didn't you even. Didn't this whole that. time we've been I talking because mind pump was. Bro, on the you guys are like, literally. Like, can I just tell you guys right now? You guys are literally the husbands where the wife does all this stuff and, and you don't <laughs> fucking notice. <laughs> we, so we you're the good. wife that's yeah. like wants yeah. the attention. We didn't notice your nails got done, bro. We didn't notice your nails got done, bro. I'm sorry. Red writing across your nails are pretty. Your nails are pretty. I can't believe you noticed a big red writing. I'm like, these guys are really not going to notice. You should have had some lights. Big just so the audience read. knows, it says Carnival King. It says yeah. Carnival King. Yeah. Well, you can't read it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, not everybody's watching video. It was, it was, oh, okay. it was stuck in good, divots good in my abs. Though. I okay. didn't see the mind pump right on the bottom, so I didn't even know so, it was a reference to you. God, Obviously, you I know the joke now. <laughs> you even notice my haircut? No. So I, yeah. I, I, so yesterday I get a text. Katrina's like, uh, "Call me on your way to work." Yeah. I'm like, "Okay." Forgot to call her, so then I get a text. Oh, it was real important. It was about it was about apparel. So then I get a message and like, oh, the guys, <laughs> the guys are gonna they're gonna get such a kick out of this. We got you a shirt that says Carnival King. Now, oh, way, our team made it. Yes. So oh, cool. by the way, there's a whole box of these. I think they're trying to sell them. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So I mean, I, I don't know how much we're gonna sell, but, but <laughs> apparently they, they think we're gonna sell a bunch of. I mean, it's kind of a cool thing. And there's a lot of people that would identify as yeah. like being really good at. So Carnival people don't Game. know the story why it says Carnival King. It says yes, they do. Everybody knows this goddamn story. Well, okay, but let me talk. <laughs> I like to talk about it. I, like, I have to hear about new listeners. Two here. or three examples. I have to hear about it. Whenever we compete in it, some kind of an event that it started with resembles horse. sports. Start with horse. <laughs> it's it's not really sports. It started with horse. I tend to beat you guys. Every yeah, time. the very first time this and ever happened was the person who gets the most mad is Justin. Even right now, he wants yeah, to fight. Yeah, me. I did. Yeah, yeah, when we we were playing, like, the you know why? Because it's it's your form. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. It really bothers me. <laughs> but it works, okay? <laughs> it's hey, it started. I, I know you win. Like I know you're yeah, just bro. joking. Bro. I don't throw like that. Joking. No, I don't, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how I throw. There's got to be a video out there, Andrew. I have to, I know say, this video. I have to bring it down just a bit. Yeah. You know I, so the no, you know, we we went we were in London and we played curling, which was it wasn't a real curling yeah. uh, thing or whatever. By the way, it's second most popular sport in Canada. I had no idea. Is that true? Yeah, dude. I oh, Canada? is that really oh, yeah. true? The second yeah. most popular curling? sport in Canada, Can besides hockey, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's hockey, and then curling. of course it's hockey. I knew hockey, but it's I literally had no makes idea. sense. Ice sliding a yeah. heavy. I, I had no idea. That's yeah. that's fascinating. Yeah. It, it's really. I mean, it's, so we were playing. It's like bocce. Max Lugavere was there. Max Lugavere is in the same athletic category. He's exactly as me. him. Okay. I swear that you and Max have the same. Batting coach, the same. Listen, like, fucking listen, listen, listen. When, when you guys are watching the same YouTube same videos, swing. Yes. <laughs> you guys get the same. All the, same. the brain energy energy is diverted to you know other stuff. Anyway, uh, so we were yeah. we played and, study show, and so yeah, so it was Max and I versus Adam and Justin. So it's the nerds versus the jocks, right? <laughs> and we're playing and classic eighties movie. At the right end, happened. we. Now it was one to one, and it was the way it was set up was almost impossible to lose. Like I was, it was like tic -tac whoever went first, it was like tic tac toe yeah. almost, right? Whoever yeah, went yeah, first yeah. is going to win. It's, so every time that one person went first, game every time, every time. Yeah. Then we won one that we didn't go first. Yeah. Now Justin got visibly yeah upset. I was so happy. Maybe on purpose. We messed up a little bit to let you guys catch up. Oh, uh, uh, now you're gonna say that. No, I wasn't oh, like, I'm, I, I messed up on purpose. No, just it, to wasn't, see that, it wasn't. It wasn't on purpose. Try and give you a chance. It wasn't on purpose. You guys didn't yeah. cut up, but Justin was so upset. He was walking around like Max. Well, so and I okay. looked at Max. I'm like, <laughs> if we win, we get the fuck out of here. This is not a good mood right now. <laughs> at least it was a cat game. It things, was a cat's yeah. game. We ended up it tied was, on that one. But the fact that you guys were even close should have. So you had to name all of it. So it was horse first. We were in Reno almost seven years ago. Yeah. Top golf, you beat us at. Then uh, the 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 ep the epic shot, basketball yeah. shot across the the, the <laughs> gym in here <laughs> to make right. it to for yeah. me to lose a car. Yeah, we got. And it. Then uh, the, I think that's it. Oh, didn't you throw a football at on it? I did through tires. I did, if I recall. Oh my that. god, I don't even remember what? that. And I, I don't remember yeah, that. I did very well. Really? Yeah. yeah. You know what I have? That's just like that one. Dark. No, I did. Yeah, I remember I that. So. You know I what have I have? That's really well. If we all go shooting. Then I'll show you guys. I have I don't I have really really good ability to to hit targets, but with, I don't my technique and form. Which one with the pistol or with the rifle? P pistol, rifle, whatever it is. Okay, I always I'll do take exceptionally it rifle. well. Yeah, Easy. I'll go with you. Easy. Yeah, yeah it's good. I'm, yeah, I, I got I can shoot clay good. So that's I'm. Down I've never that. done clay. 
Oh, really? Oh, Never. Good, it's yeah. so crazy because we have one right up the road from here. Yeah, I know. So, I'm it's ready. so I'm cool. Trying would, to get you guys to go, man. I would maybe love we'll to take a, Maybe I'll take the boys to go do that. I think there, there's a couple. There's two things I want to take them to. There's two of our events I got lined up for us. We should definitely go do I that. I would love to do that. Like, do you guys but I vision? love that they... So our team did that. I thought someone yeah. gave that as a gift. No, no. How funny is that? My wife doesn't even tell me. It's a kind of a nice... She doesn't even... The contrast. She even share that with me. Bro, red and black. These are original maps and all colors. Yep. I love it. Yeah. I actually think it's cool. I actually do think it's, it's nice cool. and snug. Yeah. You know? yeah, well, yeah, they yeah, also yeah. had it was like a um, sports bra they came out with. Like, what? Yeah, 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 no, we have yeah, a sports yeah, bra. Like a Mad Mike's yeah, yeah, it's bra. so funny how it's still. I was I like, well, how did they bra? just like leak this into our store? But what does it say? It's cool, actually. Mind pump, I think. I think yeah, it's, it's just an MP. Yeah. Mind and then pump. No, no not on the tatas like that. No, I think it's just the logo. Just like no, just the logo. Like stamps on there. Products they have. I want to see the sport. One of the products that we sell. Have no idea. You know that. You know it's so funny that. I still I to see this that day, in the gym. Still to this day, I, I I have these things where I'm like coaching other trainers or helping people. There, let's see. Like, oh shit! Yeah, yeah it's cool. Oh what? Yeah. See, that's like, cool. You can see, I know. Right? That's Girls a cool rocking that. sports bra. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow! Look at that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're already selling already. So they're really, good. yeah. I know, I know. We never talk about this stuff on the show, right? And the reason why we don't is the point that I was about to make right now. If I get a little fluffy, I'll wear. This yeah. is the most popular <laughs> thing. <laughs> your pecs. Yeah. Like and walking around Olympia, meeting other aspiring coaches and trainers that want to build a business, like. The, first of all, uh, becoming famous on social media is already like very tough to do, right? Yeah. Like, it's so very, it's very rare. But doesn't some, guarantee you're gonna make money, right? Does, oh, definitely doesn't. This is the point yeah. I'm making. That's already really difficult, right? right. To, to to get famous on social media. But if for some reason you figure that out, the that's as far as most young people have thought about their business. Then they they would argue. They'd say, "Oh no, I, I'm going to do an apparel line." It's like, dude, you have no idea what a terrible idea apparel lines are because they have an example right there's a you know christian guzman who did alpha alpha, uh, alpha lead or whatever yeah. alpha, alpha whatever it is called he's uh, done incredibly you hear about the winners you know, jim shark for every winner, winner there's literally yeah jim 10, shark 000. is an example yeah. of that alpha lead or whatever it's called is an example the margins that. suck it's hyper competitive. So difficult. You couldn't pick a worse business. You, Might as well start a restaurant. You gotta have an eye for it. You gotta be able to source it. Like there's just so much more to it than just like stamping a logo on a shirt. Everybody yeah. knows how tough it is to open a restaurant and for it to succeed. That's far easier than selling apparel and making money. Yeah, I think so too. Like anyone could do it, but like to actually be really successful at it. And then there comes this time like uh where eventually people grow out of that. Like there are a lot of these uh, people mm-hmm. that get famous on Instagram. You, you attracted a, a demographic of people at a certain age because you do something gimmicky on there or you're hot or you're buff. And over time that fades or changes. And eventually those 20 year olds become 30 and 40 year olds. And at that point in your life, you're probably not wanting to rock somebody's name, yeah. you know, or brand on a t-shirt. I mean, once you get to that mid thirty yeah. or so, you start wearing more solids because you can't really no do logos. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You like- start to, so. I mean that even your the the people that are your biggest fans eventually that that business just goes away. Like unless you've unless you're really passionate the only, about design and you actually design like a designer. The which, only time I wear a person's name or face. <laughs> on my shirt is always someone who's died already. That's like, you know what I mean? Like thousands of years ago or something like that. Right. Yeah. yeah and I don't wear like a dude now, you yeah. know, like, hey, or, or, or like a Elon lizard alien or something. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have that one. The, you know, what's that? What is, what did that famous Obama? Uh, oh, oh, the hope. Um, yeah. Hope. Propaganda. What, picture. Yeah. The, the, col- yeah. The, the colors. Yeah. That color scheme. Yeah. 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 How did that get so famous? I it just know. went viral. It's part of the campaign. Yeah. It went, yeah. It was, it went viral. Yeah, it's isn't it they interesting? They did a brilliant. They did a, they did brilliant a really campaign. good job. Obviously, I mean, look yeah, at how it's carried into generation yeah. a generation later of people still making shirts that look yeah. like that. Yeah. So I have an Elon Musk one that looks like that. Oh, I think yeah. it says hope on it too. I think it oh, says good. Something, yeah, something like that. Oh good. So I was so uh want to tell you guys yesterday, uh I, I got I was on the phone with my my oldest, my son. <clears throat> I love one thing I love uh doing with my oldest is is talking about like uh, debating or talking about scientific studies. He's a real smart kid. And so we have these really stimulating conversations. So anyway, I call him up. Hey, what's going on? You know, how come you didn't answer your phone yesterday? I was, oh, I was cramming for a psychology. He's like, dude, he goes, you want to hear something crazy? So he starts telling me about all these studies that he's reading and writing about in his class. There was a study where they, different types of light bulbs affected children's ability to perform, pay attention and retain information. Color light bulb? Huh. Different types of light bulbs. So like fluorescent versus fluorescent like LED a, a warm, suck. Suck. Yeah. 
uh, full spectrum light bulbs, the mm. ones that display the full spectrum, like the sun, uh, totally outperformed all of them. So when kids are under these kind of lights, sure. like we are, it just reduces your your brain's ability to interesting. Okay, to so perform. now is that like less energy efficient? Because I know they switched over to all these fluorescent ones because of the energy question. efficiency. Got to be Justin. That's yeah. a good Which sucks because I hate them. You know what's funny about that? What you just said. Here's how stupid sometimes people are. Let's let's say energy efficient light bulbs. Let's say they save you know ten percent energy. Wow, that's great. Everybody's awesome. But it also let's say reduces our innovative ability yeah. by ten percent or even three percent substantially, that, or even two percent. Right, right. Not worth the trade. Right. The the thing that humans have, the tool that we have, the ability that we have that makes us uh, likely to solve that we've always solved our problems. Okay, humans have flourished because we solved some of the most difficult problems that are presented to us is our ability to innovate. When you reduce humans' ability to innovate and try to trade it for 5%, this 10%, not worth it, not worth it. You want humans to be able to be peak innovators because that's how we solve problems. So I, I, yeah. I wonder, what are those lights considered? What are the ones, Doug, that we have to like black so market like Edison buy? ones? Like yeah, the, those are like tungsten or incandescent lights. Okay. Because yeah. my my favorite of, of all the all of our places and stuff where we go, uh, the the trucky house yeah. has all uh, the, that's the only house I have that has like that where yeah, it's like that feel feel it feels warm. good always feels these good. lights always feels good these lights there. especially when we turn these off and turn on the regular lights <clears throat> if we're in here for too it's long like, yeah, yeah. oh it fries me I feel like a vampire that stepped outside you guys remember Ben Greenfield's house yeah do you remember how he had a hookup to where when it got dark he would switch lights and they were yeah. like red yeah that yeah. was pretty cool that's pretty awesome pretty yeah cool. that's pretty awesome so anyway uh, speaking of red. Um, I asked my son about um, if he learned about red light therapy, and he did. Oh, really? really? Yeah, they were talking about the effects of the particular wavelength, like the one that's found in the juve panels, and its effect on mitochondria, healing, <clears throat> mood, blood sugar. And it's, remember, he, now people know this, but he uh, assisted the editing team here for a short period of time before he went off to college. So he's like, it's so cool because I'm learning this. And he's like, oh, yeah, my dad used to do commercials <laughs> yeah, right. for, for Juve. Who does I mean, that's got to be kind of cool. It's cool, you know, because he's reading cool. about this thing. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, oh, that, that's the company. Yeah, my dad was so smart yeah. to sign with a company. Yeah, like that. Totally. Do you get he that? You say, get, no. No, no yes. damn, you don't get that? No, that's the most uh, I got. <laughs> I, was, I was eavesdropping a little. And I was trying not to. But yeah. uh, he was also talking what, like about like placebo study oh, trials and stuff. Bro. What was he talking about with that? So... It, okay, so placebo, the placebo effect we know is it's real, it's weird. We have to account for it in studies because when people believe they're getting a treatment, then their bodies change and react as if they're getting that treatment. Right, and there's a famous one that you've talked about on this podcast multiple times where they go in to do the knee, knee surgery. surgery. They yeah. told half the patients that they did it. The other half, the other half, they, they just cut them and sewed them back up. Yeah, pretend, and, and they all have the same result. It just seems yeah. such a violation of HIPAA, right, bro? Like, what a I know crazy well, study. I know it's wild. anyways, but anyway, there's another thing. Uh, okay, so two things. First, if you give someone a placebo, but you include more rules around it, the placebo effect gets stronger. That's fascinating. So, like, let's say we give half the people yeah. the effective drug, the other Makes half sense. the people uh, a placebo pill, okay, sugar pill. But then we tell them, make sure you take this 15 minutes before you eat mm -hmm. uh, and take it right when you wake up on an empty stomach. Like, if you add rules <laughs> to it, then the placebo effect gets more so, pronounced. So in other because words- they must think it's more it's real. It's more real. The people yeah. that get the drug, it's obvious, okay, that's going to help them. And then there's a percentage of the ones that get the fake drug the that, are gonna, that are going to see good results. In that. And then there's even a higher percentage that if you add things to it, yes, like, oh, right. take this with water yeah, one both. hour before bed yes. and then 15 minutes before this. And so if you add all these rules around it, so, that's so So here's where my mind went with that, right? Because <clears throat> 95% of the supplement industry is placebo. Okay, it's just bullshit. Yeah. 95% of it. All sugar and fluff. If you made a placebo crap supplement and you know it, oh, these herbs do this or whatever, whatever. You added all kinds yeah, of- Yeah, dude. Yeah, you could add structure to it mm -hmm. and people are going to give you better reviews. You can literally <laughs> be like, um, you know, take our, you know, hormone boosting, whatever, and it does nothing. But you could be like, you have to take this at 6 p.m. on an empty It's stomach. also a great out And you'll get more people who- Feel it. It's also a great out for people who don't feel anything. Like, oh, did you remember to close one eye when you did that and yeah, stand yeah, on one yeah, leg yeah. and turn the lights uh, off three eight, times? Oh, I, that's okay. Why. That's why I it might didn't be work. ruffling feathers with this because I know my mom's really into this, but this is how I've always felt about like homeopathic Garbage. stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's Garbage. like little sugar pellets, no. you know, and then they Bro. have all of these you know, like please hey. standards around it. I'm like, dude, this is just. 
placebo. Please tell me you looked into the cult video that I sent you. I did. I, dude, so I, I you, you said it. that too late last I night. Know, I was like, I'm Raver sorry, bed. because I got sucked I in. I got excited. I'm going to watch it tonight it's, for sure. So I don't want to, I'm like, I'll hold my, I'll hold sharing too much about it. Um, It was called, I sent it over to the thread, Doug. What was the name of it? It's called, um, God, what's the name of it? It's anyways. Oh, 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 twins. Yes, uh, uh, twin flames. Okay. Twin flames. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, something twin flames, like re recovering mm -hmm. twin flames yeah, or right. something. So Escaping one twin flames. Thank you. Escaping twin flames. It's on Netflix. Isn't that what you so, and Justin called each other when you guys were? Uh, shut up. Yeah, shut yeah, up. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Go ahead. So, but what was most fascinating flame was on. Katrina and I are watching this, being like, <laughs> "Are you people followed this? Like people were like sucked in." So I got sucked in for people getting sucked in. Like that oh. was like, and then. Like what we always do when we watch them like that, like, man, these are like recent YouTube videos. So before it was even over, I started, it's like, it's still going and it's still vibrant. So yes. trip on that. So it's like one of your cult oh, stuff man. that you like to watch and it's still you going. One of the characteristics mm. of cults is that you, it's some people get hardened and hunker down on it when other people tell them and show them evidence it's a cult. Yeah. Oh, of course. Start doubling that. down. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You're it doesn't they matter because it worked for me. They don't want us for to so know. and so. They don't want us to know the secret. Yeah, <laughs> they cult. told us you would say that. Yeah, Bro, I was. Crazy. I was so surprised. Went on the YouTube channel, their YouTube channel. I thought for sure I'd see. How all much the... of our problems do you think are just self-made? Oh know, God, all of them. Like yeah, yeah majority. All of them. Point nine nine nine. So trip off this. Here's something else he told me. Uh, he said uh, he goes, Dad, uh, look up uh, compensatory reaction. It's a real thing. You know what compensatory reaction is? Mm -mm. If you, let's say you are you do drugs, okay? You do, let's say you do heroin all the time. It's believable. And, and you, yeah. <laughs> let's say you smoke crack. <laughs> Sorry. And you start to build up a tolerance. Yeah. Okay? If you do it in a novel area, a novel space, you're less likely to have a tolerance than if you do it in the space that you always do it in. So. Wait, 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 wait. Say that again? You, so. If you. Let's say you do. You, 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 I do heroin all the time. You do heroin yeah. all the time. Okay. If you Got do it. it in novel place, you're going to, you're going to feel it more and have less of a, uh, um. What's it You're called? When you build up a tolerance. Oh, less yeah. of a tolerance, tolerance. than tolerance. if you do it in a space, you always do it in. Oh, okay. Uh, so what happens is, trip off this. When you're in a, let's say you have a spot that you always do your drug. You have a place that you always do your drug. Yeah, and yeah. this is actually quite common, he was telling me. Apparently, this is a thing. You do your drug in this one area. Your body anticipates you're going to take the drug mm. and already uh, kicks in the detoxifying pathways and the- Oh, fascinating. And it builds up tolerance before you even take it. Wow. Com yeah, it's called a uh, compensatory. So you're reaction. helping all these drug these so, drug addicts out right now. Yeah. Hey, do your drugs in different places. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in the park, on <laughs> the plane. <laughs> Interesting. That's that's on pretty. That's, that's your head. That's I, on your mind. I know. That's so. Hmm. This led me down a rabbit hole, and I was reading about pain because pain, I think, is the easiest thing to study when it comes to our, <clears throat> the, our mind's effects because pain is a perceived sensation, and pain is very easily. Pain's effective. a fascinating subject. Do you know that they can't separate emotional from physical pain? Did you guys know that? They mm -hmm. can't. Mm -hmm. It's almost, it's almost. Meaning the way it registers in the brain. The way you yeah. feel it. Yeah. The way you feel it. The phys physical. It affects your emotion. Like pain caused yeah. from something physical versus pain that's caused from something emotional. Same shit is happening in the body. In other words, I'm going to read you a quote from this paper that I read. I blew my mind. I read it's it. Like and I was like chicken versus uh, the egg. Bro, listen to this. In many ways, so this is from these experts, right? In many ways, we feel the pain we expect to feel. Wow. Trip off wow. that shit. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. God, it makes you wonder, right? Well, yeah, and that's why like kids have such a different perspective yes. of pain because they haven't really gone through that process of like, you know, I do this, this happens as a result of that and <clears throat> until like – you know, they get that sort of data that they can fall back well, on. Well, you guys have had this experience because all of us, uh, we weren't the greatest, uh, <laughs> we weren't the best rule of buying kids. We all got a lot of fist fights when we were kids. We've talked about I this. I know, yeah. Uh, I, okay. We were anybody, a little bit more brutal generation. Anybody who's ever gotten a real life, like, fist fight, you, like, you ask them, did you notice your injuries until after? No, like, no, it was after. No, yeah. No, yeah I remember I got a one yeah. and I shredded my, I mean, I shredded my hand. I thought it was adrenaline that carried yeah. me through. And I didn't even know. I was walking yeah, away yeah. and my buddy's like, dude, your hand's all messed up. And I'm right. like, oh, shit. And I started feeling it. <laughs> yeah, Crazy. No. No, yeah. I thought it was your adrenaline, but. You know, and you know. to tie it all back to, to fitness, right? Like, this is so, it just shows you the importance of when you're getting ready to start this journey, like how you frame all of it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, is this going to be, if you already are telling yourself it's going to be this miserable process and you're going to have to give up so much of your life and it's going to be all, like if you focus on all that. You're like, manifesting it, it's going to happen. It's going to be or, that way. Or how, like, about, or how about this? I hate myself. I hate the way I look. I'm disgusting. Your body believes 
leaves you, yep. yeah. it'll mount an immune response. It'll mount an inflammatory response. Your body will start to attack itself because you're telling yourself that your body's not good. It's disgusting. Get rid of it. By the way, this evolutionarily makes sense. Your inside of your body has to believe what your perception is. It has to. If you perceive something, your body has to react. Yeah. Why wouldn't your body treat itself like an enemy when you're constantly telling yourself your body's an enemy? That's why that that whole gratitude practice when you feel anxiety is so brilliant. Yeah. Like the I, I don't know why I'd never heard that before until not that long ago. Yeah. And I'm like, that is so such a smart practice. And and everyone talks about anxiety, right? That's so that's like one of the most popular conversations you hear yeah. around mental health right now is like yeah. how much anxiety everybody has. And it's like well, maybe we need to all practice being grateful more often. And when that when that anxiety hits, like how many of you have actually disciplined yourself when you get that feeling of like shut the way you shut it down is by switching over and being like consciously, right? Yeah, consciously going like mm -hmm. you know what are the things that I'm very grateful for. By the way, that's hard to do because I think people feel like at You're least drowning. Me, well, not just that. For me, it feels like <laughs> uh, oh, it, gratitude should just happen naturally. No, no, you have to literally make well, the you choice. You have to be intentional. Yeah, like it. I know mm -hmm. I'm anxious. And you know what sucks when you feel anxious <clears throat> or angry or other shitty feeling. People think I don't want to feel this way. No, they do. There's a part that wants to. Of you. course, that's why you're in it. Because you ever tell somebody, okay, I know you're mad and anxious. Try practicing gratitude. Yeah. Nah, screw you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I guess you want to stay in that yeah. space? Yeah. No, no, no. Actively try to do this and watch what happens yeah. and see what happens. Yeah. yeah, pretty pretty interesting stuff. All right, I got some cool, I got a really, really interesting statistic for you guys. Um, you guys know how I always quote that Hadza tribe study that shows that they yeah. they burn as many calories as average like sitting on the couch yeah so i went through and i looked up um how many steps the average hunter gatherer takes on a daily basis now keep in mind we typically recommend the average person take 10,000 10, steps a day yeah. which and is the, 5 miles and so the average, average person only takes about 3500 yeah average person <laughs> takes about 3500 yeah. so we tell people to take 10,000 which is 5 miles a day the average Work hunter, up to the that. average hunter gatherer. You ready for this? Uh, let me guess. Let's yeah, guess. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so are you gonna go by miles or are you go by steps? Both. Okay. Either one. So, so, so five miles or ten thousand steps is the average person. Is it? No, that's what we tell people. Yeah, yeah, the, that's what we tell people. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, to get sorry. to so that's already so a goal. That's average. three times what the average person is doing already. Yeah. So I'm gonna guess. Uh, I'm gonna guess four times that. That's gonna be my um, guess. Okay. So. Yeah. Wow, so uh, so we're telling people to take five miles a yeah. day walks. Yeah, they're doing. You think 20. that the average? Okay, what about you? I'm thinking like twenty five, thirty thousand. Okay, Doug, I'm gonna say twenty thousand. Yeah, you you and Adam very close. Nineteen thousand steps. I'm wow. uh, sorry, nineteen thousand, uh, nineteen miles. Yeah, nineteen. Yeah, miles, miles. Wow. a day. These people are taking. How many steps is that? Uh, well, ten thousand steps is five miles. So four times that. So yeah. that's 40,000. So I'm way off. Yeah. Yeah. 40,000. Yeah. Okay. So 19 right. miles a day, not a thousand steps. Yeah. They're walking yeah. on average, almost 20 miles a day. <laughs> yeah. Every I day. Mean, I mean, I believe that because I think, I mean, even when they're at rest, they sit in a squat position. They're active. Yeah. They're active. Yeah. They're moving. Yeah. I mean, they're constantly. So moving think around. about that for a second, right? That hunter gatherer study, <clears throat> which was really good. And they've also, by the way, they've done it. They've done other studies. And how well is it? Their bodies adapted to that calorie intake. They're walking, uh, 19 miles a day. Okay. And they're burning the same amount of calories as the average, like overweight Westerner. Yeah. Because your metabolism adapts. Efficient. It adapts. That's why you got to lift weights. Yeah. If you just try and do a shit ton of activity and cardio, by the way, that's not saying it's not healthy. If you were to walk that much and it was okay and appropriate for you, you might not get lean from it necessarily, but <clears throat> it'll improve your health for sure. Oh, so for I'm not saying there's nothing good to it. But if you want to get lean, you got to speed up your metabolism. Otherwise, it, it adapts. That's a lot of steps. Yeah, a that's lot. a lot of walking. Hundred percent. Every single day. Every single day. Did I see our uh, our buddy Mike Matthews is doing like a, a trainer training thing? Did I see that? Did no, you guys see that fun around? Did no. you Did you hear that? No. Did you I, not read the notes that you have up on your TV there, Doug? Well, that has nothing to do with Legion. That has to do with us. Yeah. Oh, this is we're us? doing a trainer training. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, I saw. I, was gonna say, I saw it put right next to Legion. I thought that it was Legion that's doing that. No, no, it's uh, us. No, we're us. doing a trainer training. Is that going to be? Hold on. Before we before we announce this thing, is this going to be up by the time we, this episode goes up? Is it yes, it will be. So it's on uh, January fifteenth. This is a big deal. Okay, yeah. I want to tell everybody uh, we have not worked on a project as intensely with as much meaning and purpose as we have with this one. That's not to say we, we you know, with the other MAPS programs and all that stuff, like we are putting something together yeah. for coaches and trainers. 
Uh, we love everybody, but trainers and coaches, you have a special place in our heart. We were all trainers and coaches ourselves. And we know what you guys are doing for people's health. So we're doing a three part trainer training, which is free. This is going to be free and it's going to be starting January 15th. So does that mean it goes 15th, 16th, 17th? Yeah. Correct. Yep. Okay. So, so you three. have to sign up at mindpumptrainer.com and uh, we're going to, it's going to be awesome. It's free. It's three days. And if you can't make the, so when we do it live, it's Justin, gonna be live, by the way. Justin you can ask and I will, questions. yeah. Justin and I will be on there yeah. with you, and we'll be answering yeah. all the questions that are coming in. If you can't make it live, there's you'll still get sent the recording. Yes. Mm -hmm. So for people that see it, maybe it conflicts with the time or whatever yeah. like that, but you'll still get the recording. Speaking of Legion, I've brought this up on an episode before, but we only ever talked about it once. And <clears> my buddy who came yesterday to listened to the show. Yeah. He's a Legion fan, so he comes every once in a while. He gives me free financial advice. My friend Dominic, love him. <laughs> Training for Legion protein. And, and I, no. And I, <laughs> Yeah, I, he doesn't trade. trade. He just does it, right? And yeah. I, I feel like I want to give him something in return. So every once in a while, I'll give him like you know uh, something that we have in the back. And I gave him Legion protein a while ago. He loves it. Legion puts. I talked about this once. They put together stacks. So he was like, "Dude, I love the stacks that they put together on their website." So they'll have like a mass building stack, a longevity stack, a whatever, and it, it, they'll combine their different products and uh. discount them. So you could buy them, use them together. And they're designed to be used uh, synergistically. Smart. If mind. you go on their website, yeah, it's good stuff. So he was telling me yesterday, he's like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the mass stack. What do you think of it?" I'm yeah. like, "Legion's legit, dude." Did you do you know what comes on that or it comes with that? Maybe we could look it up. I don't remember, but I think pro, I think recharge, which is their creatine <clears throat> protein powder, is in there. I don't remember what else was included. I in didn't. That one. Uh, what is the okay? Remind me why you take. I so saw anyways, I'm thinking of Legion right now because I just started taking it. I didn't realize he had a vitamin D supplement until not that yeah. long ago. And it's vitamin D three K. Yeah, vitamin yeah. D three, but it's got K and what else does it have in it? Maybe magnesium. There's one other thing. No, it's not I don't think it's magnesium. So vitamin K But there's someone was telling me why you want to take K with D. Okay, real quick. The muscle growth stack is whey protein, pulse, which is their pre workout and recharge, which is their creatine supplement. Okay. Don't forget the IC. Oh, sorry. The what? No, never mind. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you had <laughs> whatever. He said D and K. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Uh, so D, so vitamin D, you take it with vitamin K because they both uh, work together. So you're going to get better absorption of vitamin D and uh, and the K is good for blood clotting. It's good for the bones. It's good for health as well. So then why don't all vitamin D supplements? It's not necessary. It's not necessary. But it's better for absorption. Yeah, probably better. Yeah, probably. Yeah, we actually talked. Maybe, Doug, look up vitamin D with K versus just vitamin D. I, we, I got to, I mean, I wish I would have remembered. Well, I've the, heard that it helps you with calcium absorption. And cal that, calcium absorption. That's the other That's it. it. Yeah. There was also something to do with the buildup of the plaque, because we mm. talked about yes, this. Yes, correct. The buildup of plaque, and they someone so wrote, D and K, some nutritionist wrote me a long old thing mm -hmm. about when you talk about vitamin D, you should always recommend that people take it for K, and then that was the exact, yeah. and that was, it had to do with uh, plaque buildup. That's yeah. why I was asking it. Yes. So I couldn't remember exactly what they said. And I'm like, oh, I don't remember. I don't remember reading. Yeah. That. So vitamin D3, vitamin K2, and then add calcium. So, so vitamin K combined with vitamin See? D significantly increase the total bone mineral density. That's what it was. It was the episode when we were talking. We just recently talked about that. Oh right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you're supplementing uh, to increase bone uh, density because of a, a nutrient deficiency, which is typically either D, K, calcium, or magnesium, or all of those, then you take them. You take D and K together. To help. Yeah. yeah, and if your body doesn't use calcium effectively, it can raise the risk of depositing calcium in the arteries and soft tissue. That's, That's exactly right. what you said. Uh, By the way, the, best, exactly the best way to prevent that is to strength train. Because if you take a bunch of calcium or you eat foods with calcium and the calcium has nowhere to go because your body's not trying to utilize it for bone strengthening, then that's, so if you strength train. You so that, so that, that becomes increasingly more important if you're not lifting weights. Yes. And yeah. then if you're lifting weights, you already have kind of a protective. A little bit, okay. but it's probably better. Still. Yeah. 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 Interesting that all I, you, and of course I leave it to Mike, right? Cause I know Mike. Is Vitamin all, K, if I'm not mistaken, especially for women who menstruate regularly, uh, it's important because they lose uh, certain nutrients when they menstruate. Yeah. So if I'm not mistaken, maybe does There's the up. I, iron, boom. Mm -hmm. Iron is the other D, one. D, Oh, you got it, C, see? K, boom. The whole time you're waiting it's to the see. the stack you guys have been waiting for. There you go. The vitamin K stack. helps regulate the flow of blood <laughs> during periods. Lack of adequate amounts of vitamin K can cause excessive bleeding. That's the other thing. Because vitamin K helps with uh, blood clotting. Mm -hmm. So, Beautiful. good stuff. Yeah. Speaking of health, um, here's an interesting statistic that strengthens the argument 
that we are not suffering from an obesity epidemic, but rather a lack of muscle. Lack of muscle. Lack of muscle epidemic. And obesity is one of the side effects of this. It's like the smoke, but the fire is where we want to look, right? A lot of people don't know this. 40%, okay, almost half. So it's a significant minority. 40% of people who get diabetes, hypertension, or cardiovascular disease, okay, are not overweight. Hmm. So they talk about obesity, and, and obesity itself does cause lots of these issues. But almost half of the people with the things I just mentioned are not overweight. They're not over fat. What do they all have in common? Under-muscled. Mm. Yeah. It's the muscle that is the issue. Build muscle. It's very, very protective. Um, but crazy. A lot of people don't know that. They think, I bet people would guess it'd be more like 90% of people who yeah, get this. Yeah, I would have guessed that. Mm. I would have guessed that. I, that's 40, almost half you're saying. That's right. It's not. That's, that's right. That's actually really interesting. Yep. yep. Wow. You guys don't have any family members like that where they were overweight and then they had, oh, yeah. 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 I mean, it, it, it goes back to, to uh, like the muscle quality. It would be interesting yeah. to see if you could like, um, sort of slice it in half and you could see like in the marbling or like, yeah. you know, versus like a good uh, quality dense, like muscle tissue. Yeah. Cause it's, yeah, you, you see like, they're not huge or not like, I have like some, I guess you'd call them skinny fat sort of, uh, you know, family members that aren't quite as physically active as they used to be, but it's like, they, they don't look like visibly out of shape, but they definitely, uh, you could tell are limited. So, you know, do you, is there, do you know that I don't care. I've actually, I'm glad you went this direction. I've never asked you this before. And I've always uh, wondered this. Do you think people that actually don't show a, a, a lot of like visceral fat like that and they hold more internally and vice versa? You mean is true? visceral is the internal? Oh, that's what I mean. Yeah, Excuse yeah. me. People that have that or, or that don't show yeah. it so much and vice versa. So, like, you have the skinny fat person. So, I used to say this as a trainer, like, I think sometimes it's more dangerous when I get like the client who is like skinny looking and I test their body fat and their body fat percentage is really high, but they don't look like it. And so the thought is like, I wonder if that person is, is got a lot of visceral fat versus. Yeah. Visceral fats, the fatter on the organs, that's the worst kind. Mm -hmm. And then the fat that uh, Dr. Gabriel Lyon was talking about within the muscle, we had, we don't really test for that. Yeah, we don't No, So, and, and it sucks because I think it shows up as lean body. <clears throat> but do you think it's so misleading? Cause a lot of time, I mean, I don't know if you've seen this too, but like they get like emboldened that they're still kind of skinny. Yes. So they just keep like perpetually. That's eating. my point. Yeah. But yet they keep building all, all this fat up around like their organs and they don't and see it. Yeah. So they think they're okay. Do you think that is, do you think there's a direct correlation with that? Like, so let's say you have two people, you, you measure their body fat and, one of them is visibly overweight. You yeah. can tell. I mean, they're 30% body fat and they look like they're 30% body fat plus. We're talking about a male right now. And then you have another one who's 30% also, but he's skinny looking. Like, is Probably it, worse. Yeah, I would guess that, I would right? Probably, yeah, I would guess worse. I would, I would think so too. You know what's crazy about so, what you're talking about? We all know people like this. My grandfather, uh, my dad's side was like this. He had a belly. You couldn't pinch fat on it. Mm. So he had this big belly. It was all distended. Mm -hmm. and, and he would joke about it like, oh, it's a hard, it's all hard. And he'd laugh about it, whatever. And it literally- it's my uh, one pack. The last time I saw him, <laughs> I'd go to pinch it. And I mean, you could pinch some, but it wasn't a lot. No. It was all visceral. It was all underneath the muscle and around his organs. Yeah, you see that. Mm. And then you see they get those little like deposits, yeah. right? Where they have like all these like little- All like, those knots looking. Yes. I don't know if that's connected. And that's a good question. I wonder what that is though. Hmm. I think it is I see connected. that when some people get ripped too. They'll get like, they'll look like they have bumps. Oh, really? On that's called lipo, uh, lipo something. Um, in extreme cases, the people will get it on their arms and stuff. Oh, yeah. I knew somebody like that. Yeah, my buddy's dad is, he's got- the, They're like benign saying, tumors he's, he's got a, a belly and it's like hard as a rock. Mm -hmm. And then he also has like those little deposits all over. Yeah, so like yeah. Uh, lipomas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lipomas okay. are what they are. Doug, put up, put lipomas up there. I th like, are they? They're just deposits yeah, of fat. Yeah, I'm trying to think of if I've seen that before. Oh, you have. Oh, you I'm definitely. Sure have, oh, yeah, yeah you for sure. Have. It's a non-cancerous benign lump that forms due to an overgrowth of fat cells. Yeah. Click on images, and then we'll show. We'll, it'll show you pictures of what they look like. So I knew somebody where. I mean, they were all over. Him. I think I've seen it on the the, the arm before too. Yeah, and I know, looks, I've, I've definitely seen it on several people's like guts before. Yeah, there you go. Those uh, are yeah. Okay. See, yeah. those are lipomas. Strange, right? What yeah. would cause that? There's not one on the gut, though. I will show yeah. you like what a belly looks like. Yeah, you could put lipomas on the stomach. I feel like everybody I has like an that. uncle or a, 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 somebody that they have that has that, that has this. Because he used to brag too about how 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 solid. Huh. Yeah. yeah, he's like, yeah, oh, yeah. I feel. There's I'm a so guy right there on the right. You can kind of circle him. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. 
But when they get really, I've seen people get really lean and have that. You know, when I was younger, I thought that was, uh, that was, uh, some of these pictures are disturbing. Oh God, look at that. Let's oh, get out of there yeah, real quick. Yeah, yeah. Get the hell out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, when I was younger and I saw bodybuilders with that, I thought that it was, uh, oh, this lumps from the steroids or something. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, build up. Yeah. It's just, they injected right before they went on, on stage or, you know, whatever. Uh, anyway, it's, yeah. uh, it's, uh, fascinating, um, to me that it's such a huge percentage, 40%. Is almost half. So you're not protected. How many people walk around because they're not overweight and then they get this shock? I have an uncle like this, shocked that he got, you know, a heart attack. Yeah. You know, and he's like, what's going on? I'm not even overweight. Yeah. And I'm like, you need to strengthen your body, dude. It's the muscle that's the it's the lack of strength and lack of muscle, you know, that's causing some of these problems. Yeah, anyway, I, I want to read something to you guys that I, I read this morning that I thought was super fascinating. It was someone's tweet. And, um, it really, I think there's something to it. Okay. Sure. So check this right. out. This is the tweet. Men want sex. Women want attention. This is why porn ruins men and social media ruins women. Hmm. Now the data on social media's negative effects on people shows that social media has a far more negative effect on women than it does on men. And then the data on porn shows the reverse. Far more negative effect on men than on women. I think that's true. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, there's obviously some uh, crossover there with uh, yeah. social media and like getting attention from women that, you know. Sure. But yeah, I could see that's definitely a bigger pull for men in the porn direction. Yeah, like yeah. think about that. Like, you know, an insecure, you know, kind of woman, you know, she's she wants it. She wants the attention. She wants people to focus on her. Talk, look at me, see whatever. Sure. Social media allows that. Mm -hmm. And then of course, when it comes to pornography, men are, are visually stimulated and more likely to get, you know, develop issues. As a result, I thought that was fascinating. That, that is. is. So, did you did the tweet get a ton of controversy? What was it? How was it received? People were agreeing. They but agree. I mean, it might be a self selection bias because it's a person, so their followers are going to agree. I mean, sometimes sometimes people get so defensive about stuff like that. You know? I you yeah. know, but think about it. Like uh, Doug, look up social media's effects on girls versus boys. Okay. It's a lot worse for uh now it's bad for it can have like just like porn can affect a lot of people yeah negatively. i mean i haven't but it definitely I, skews more I mean, definitely what i i guess i would see the trends of like um what women wear and everything in terms of like uh i feel like social media accelerated what i yeah. saw before was like uh i guess like not that um wouldn't happen that as common? much in, yeah, yeah. In, in, in real life. I wouldn't see it as much like walking around, but now you see, you know, the version of what you see on social media a lot more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. See, girls are more likely than boys to say social media has made them feel like their friends are leaving them out of things or much, feel worse though. about their own life. 37 to 24% and then 28 no, 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 to 18%. 45 to 32. That's overwhelmed. But then look at the rest of them. Um, so if you go down, the, so I looked this up. Uh, if you go down the list of the negative things that that people will report yeah. with social media, girls are far more affected. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I, feel, I like, feel like far is a is a is a stretch when you're talking about ten percent. That's not ten. That's, well, first off, it's thirteen percent, which is a big. That's a, one is thirteen, one is ten. One is thirteen. The other one is okay. twenty seven to twenty four. Then you have twenty eight to eighteen. If you go across that's, the board, that's thirteen and ten percent. Yeah. If that's you go not, well, if you go across the board, my point is, it's a significant. Uh, it's significantly more negative for girls. Well, that's why. I, that's what I'm correcting is I don't agree that it's that's a significant number when you're talking about a poll like that. I mean, I, I think it's 50 percent more girls over boys in mm, these. That's a 50 percent. Yeah, yeah. So you have like say 10 girls feel this way, only five boys will. For that's example. right. Yeah, that is significant to me. Yeah, yeah. that's but, what you're looking at. That's well, not five, like mean. seven, seven boys. Yeah. yeah, that's percentages, bro. That's not a small percentage. You take 10,000. Boys, thirty-two percent of them versus forty-five percent. How many more girls is that? That's a lot. Mm. That's a big percentage. Well, as a total number, it's that's yeah, a, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I would expect it to be a more dramatic number than a, a difference of thirteen oh, or ten percent. Yeah. I don't think that's a. I, I mean, but God, this is also self-reported, uh, so that's Pew Research. But you can see other yeah, data, right? Like, think yeah. about that. Okay, we yeah. know how how many men are going to admit 
that their feelings are hurt or they're mm. insecure about something exactly. like that. Like, you got to factor that in. What now? Bump it another five percent. So now it's really a five. Like, I, I don't know. Women are much more social to begin with, so it's like that. Doug, look up the, the, on there. Big takeaway is look up social everybody media. fucking is affected by it. So like, yeah. So look up. Okay, that first search actually is pretty good. Click on that one that just came up. What gender is more? And then you could, you know, changing your search, you could look up. Um, uh, what would you want to look up? Um, I, and I guess the reason why I'm challenging this is because not that I, I don't think there's somewhat of a discrepancy here is that, that I think it equally, both those things equally affect both sex dramatically. Okay, so look, if you look, I think women watch porn and probably go like, Oh, I got to live up to this. I don't even like that. Or this doesn't feel good. Like I'm sure they have their own issues that they have with it. Oh yeah. I think men yeah. But the addictive, look, the like people get addicted to porn or really negatively affects their life. It's mostly men. Yeah. It's, you know, look at that the one. The usage oh, of it is different. Body image issues. Like, boys are going to get affected too, but girls get far more affected by social media. Mm -hmm. uh, and then think of this. There's also this here. Try to get attention on social media as a boy or a man versus as a girl or a woman. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I can make also the argument too, though. Like, I mean, God, imagine yeah. a lot of these young men that are that like, uh, we're they're striving to be successful. And like, when you look on social media, you think every dude is fucking rich. Every dude's got a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, and he's traveling private all over the place. And so it's like, man, I and here I am working my butt off to make you know sixty grand a year, and I feel inadequate because of that. Like, I mean, I think there's well, let's do this. It's uh, affecting both sexes sure, pretty it's, equally. It's, no, I don't think it's not equal. All the data, every single well, I mean, thing okay, that they it's do, not so. exactly, but I don't think it's you're you're making it sound like it's really a big difference. I don't feel like it's that big of a difference. Dude. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a significant bro. And especially when you do studies, when you're comparing the genders, differences between genders, typically, unless you're talking about like physical strength or like the obvious stuff, we're not that different. Men and women are pretty similar on a lot of different things. 10% is literally one out of every 10 person. So every 10 people, there's one more boy than girl. Or one more girl than boy. That's not a. I don't think that's a. When huge, you talk about, especially when we're we're self select, like we, these people are reporting themselves, and studies are all. You got to factor in flawed the flawed part of that too. Like it's not. So have you seen uh, the data on anxiety uh, and how it's rising among kids, and then compare that to boys versus girls? Have you seen that? I, I, I have, but I don't know. Significant, I assume, yeah. significantly higher growth rate among young girls. I mean, all the negatives. My point is, anyway, with this is, is I thought it was an interesting tweet, and I think there's definitely some truth to it. That's all I'm saying. No, I, I, I mean, it, it, maybe look up. It usage, makes for Doug. a good conversation because I do, I, I do, I do think that there's, there's, there is a conversation here to be had. Mm. But I, I, I don't. Know I will say a, this: porn is probably worse for boys than social media is for girls. I think boys are more affected by porn than the girls are affected by social media in terms of percentages. That's I, I would. That's what I would yeah. say. I mean, you and there's also this. You got to factor in uh, the usage of both those things and how much that makes a difference. Right? Oh, like girls the, use it way the, more. Yeah. Like, well, I mean that like a, a a girl who has a social an Instagram but checks it once a week, and a guy who gets on porn once a week. Versus the same person who does that. Oh, every that's not that's not that's not how they do it. What they do I know, is but they, my, that's my point of how much that could that would make even more of, course, of an impact. But that, they're not looking at that. What they're looking at is uh, how many hours a week does it, the, do the do the worst the people with the worst issues with porn watch it, and then what's that make up? And then how many people have neg report negative effects from social media? What does that usage look like? Of course, in the middle, there's going to be tons of of crossover, right? Yeah, I mean, I feel like what take, does that say, Doug? Like you're, you're your TV disconnected. Oh, okay. Yeah. So girls are more frequent users of social media networks. 91% uh, of girls were on networks such as Facebook and Instagram against 83% of boys. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know about length of use. That's yeah. a good yeah. question. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel like the biggest takeaway is just it highlights how both, how those are both extremely toxic habits totally. and behaviors that we have, totally. we've normalized. Not just that, but I mean, have just introduced. Yeah. Like right. they didn't exist. Right, right. You literally would, Pornhub and that access to that much pornography did not exist just what two and a half decades ago. No. And the same thing goes for social media, didn't exist before. And so here's these two extremely <sighs> addictive, yes. yeah. toxic things that both men and women are drawn to. Uh and I and I creates think that, dysfunction in social interactions in real life. Uh, you know, it's yeah. like, from both sides. Wow. Just so very girls spend nearly an hour more on social media than boys. Girls are more social. They're more. They read social cues more. They're influenced more by community, it's by like opinions, it, yeah. by what people think. It's the collective, yeah. Which community. because it, it goes to their strength, right? Women were the society builders. Right? Now, men they, are, are men are far more suicidal, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, but less likely to be depressed. 
So Which, we, that's funny. Just like that, that's yeah. a, that, we're we, doers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucked up. It's we take a, action. So it's a bad thing. So terrible. Damn. No, well, man, I'm allowed to laugh at that because I lost my father to that. So that's the only reason why oh, I can, I can, I can laugh at that. Fucking I can laugh. Thanks. <laughs> no, no I mean you're gonna, have some, you're gonna have somebody who's gonna get all fucking sensitive because we because you laughed about some right, shit right, like right. that. Right, right, right. Come on, we get, I get fucking. We get a pass. No, it's terrible. Come on, that's a terrible thing. But yeah, men. So men men die from suicide three to five times more often than females. But women suffer from depression and anxiety and have more negative affect. Uh, than men do but yeah men are more likely to do it i mean i wouldn't you f think that that kind of factors into that number though right because the men are not if they took their life they're not reporting that they're suffering from depression where women don't take their life but then continue to take yeah they the don't depression. talk about their feelings so how are you gonna know mm -hmm. really at that point so. you know do you think that um i mean you some countries are already like i think china is like there's they only allow their kids the kids a certain amount yeah. uh, of time i mean this is one of the 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 tough parts of being in a completely free society, right? Is you have that, to do it. Yeah, yeah. you have yeah. to make that choice. And so we have to go through this, you know, learning curve. Like how long until we start educating our kids on like Well, we haven't even regulated pornography. I mean, anybody can go online at any moment and yeah. see anything. And I'm like super like we should have the choice to do whatever we want type of deal. But the data on it now is coming out back and it's pretty bad yeah. it's really bad like if a kid watches porn before the age of 15 i think the odds of them having a successful relationship later <laughs> decreased by it was like a significant yeah. percentage. how did that get away from us because there was quite a bit of standards in terms of you being 18 and like i guess because it was physically like yes. you would go into a store yes. and like there's like a lot of like barriers yes uh, to that previously and now it's like I mean, they kind of started by having you have to check a box or whatever, but it's like, who the heck knows who you are? Yeah. Like, because there's no real verification yeah. process. Well, I also think that th they followed the freemium model that mm. works so well on yeah. the internet is that there's so much volume that you can give away a lot for free. And by, by default, you're going to get a percentage of people that actually pay for more access. Yeah. And so if old business would be like, oh, this is what I'm selling. There's no way I'm going to give this for free. You got to pay for it. If you want this video cassette, you got to pay for it. Or if you want access to this magazine, you got to pay for it. Where the internet comes along and goes like, oh, actually, if we just get everybody hooked and addicted on it, there's a percentage of people that are going to need more or want more. It's just that it's also, it's also, it was out, it grew so fast that regulators couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. And then because of its popularity and power, now regulating it is really I, hard. I do feel like it's more of a conversation, don't you agree? Like I feel like that it's both social media and uh, pornography. I, I, and I don't know if this is a bias because of the people I follow and the circles yeah. that we're in, but it does feel like to me more people are aware. Like you think of like the movie Social Dilemma, that or the I think it was a movie, right? Or the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the docu series yeah, type yeah, thing yeah. that on yeah Netflix. Yeah, I feel like more and more of that stuff is coming out, and so and I do. I told you guys before that I, I see this trend on the generation coming up where it's you know, they don't post so much on they like they post once every few months. You know, on Instagram, it's actually more cool now to not be constantly. Oh, you think that you look right thirsty? Thing? You look yeah. thirsty if you're yeah. posting every single day. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't have a business, like, what are you well, doing? I'll like, tell you, man. Because we, when we are at Arc, that woman comes up and she talks about the current. Because now we have data. We didn't have data when this first started mm -hmm. happening, right? Mm -hmm. And she said, "Don't let your kids get a smartphone or go on social media until they're in high school." Yeah, yeah. Until they're in high school. Okay, looking back, it's the biggest uh, regret I have with my because I have obviously four kids, but they're all they're divided by a pretty big gap. That's the biggest regret that I have is I let my kids go on, you know, internet and do whatever way too early, way too loud. I mean, the hard part is that like you and Doug, because of the age of your guys' kids, are you guys really we didn't know it was no. so. I mean, remember when that stuff came out? It was all new. Well, not only that, but it was celebrated. Like yeah. this is amazing technology. Right? People. It's going to change yeah. the world. It's so like look at all the things they're at. Look at all yep. the business coming from it. Like it was yep. so on the positive. We're just now the the conversation shifting to all the dangers of it. So I, I feel for for moms and dads that well now with my younger two, they're not they're of course we're not even have you, it right. You have a different no. you have a whole different uh, view of it I now. Know. So it's crazy. Hopefully, what you don't do is overcorrect.
Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you, because you're at the two ends that you didn't, yeah. you went one extreme, let, let it off, let it go like crazy. Then you have these ones that you're so freaked out about that yeah, you're like, yeah. you're not allowed to touch it. A little, little camera hovering above them all the time. Yeah. Watch what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, the overcorrecting thing, I think that's more of a oh, risk. You just said something. When you're not in a, in a, a, a surrounded by other people who do the same thing. Like you, if okay, your you kid just, is different than all the other kids, it's hard. You just but said, if you have all these friends that are like, you that. just said something that's actually been really on my mind right now. And I'd love to hear some, I'd love to hear professional on this okay so <clears throat> i love that lucky you happen to be a professional i, I love <laughs> i love the nanit camera the technology oh, yeah. and the like to be able to like it's just so cool right but i also realize now that my son is aware of it and old enough that he actually talks to us in it yeah. right where he'll <laughs> daddy could you come in yeah. here and then like and i thought Am I training my son and this generation to be so okay with something always being watched? Totally. Them yeah. That I'm I also I'm conditioning them to be even more okay with like this. You guys freak out about Siri. about all these th these government the interventions of being able to. They're not going to care. They're not going to care. They're no, like right. my dad was watching me with a camera 24 seven. Like plus, do they ever feel like they have private, mm -hmm. a quiet alone time? Right. If they have that, they don't feel no, that way no, because no. they know yeah. dad's right there in the You're glowing right. light. I don't I'm know like, what that looks like, oh, like when like, you take oh. that away. Like my son just turned three. Like, do we yeah. do it now? Like I, wanna, I get it with like a baby. Oh I want it gone now. Like Katrina and I, I already told her that like she, uh, it's going to be, maybe her, put it outside his door. I don't think he needs so it. He, he doesn't need it at all anymore. He doesn't need it at all anymore. There's no reason other than what she wants or what we want as parents. He is old enough now. If you want us, come get To us. go to the bathroom, yeah. get, come in our room, open doors. Yeah. He can do everything he needs to communicate to us. And we're right down the hall. There, That is 100% our, our issue. Yeah, and so, you're probably right. 100%. Yeah, I missed that window. Yeah, we, we Bro, just had the, uh, yeah, so you could hear, but we didn't see. We were raised on none of it. Yeah. None, of it. None, of it. none of it. None of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. so we, and we if were. If you got sick, you had to get up, yeah. walk to your parents' room and throw up on their floor. And That's really, my, and really my fear is that <laughs> yep. because he's now at that awareness stage, that am I conditioning him okay for like being monitored all the time? And that's normal. And what? also not ever, and always feeling like he's being watched and yes. having his own. Yeah, I know, yeah. dude. I know. I'm so, with you, bro. So hopefully my wife hears thing. this and she throws it out by the time I get home. Yeah, she's, she's, she's got <laughs> one chance, on you. Got a chance time. of that. All right, so let's do a shout out. Uh, this gentleman, he's got a great podcast. Sharp, sharp, very sharp, very intelligent. One of the best talks at the uh, Arc. Yes. Fire. His, his name is Constantine. What's his last name? Kissin. Kissin. I think that's how you say it. Spelled with a K, both. Constantine Kissin. This guy is fire. I would hate to debate this guy. Oh, he yeah. just shreds people. So good. So such a great communicator. One of my favorite. Uh, he also has been interviewed on our good friend Chris Williamson's podcast. That's a good listen to. I was actually yeah. listening to some of that the other day. So awesome, awesome guy. There's a new product on the market for hair regrowth, and this is not like anything else. It's a novel peptide blend. Peptides, you've probably heard me talk about them on the podcast. They can trigger systems in the body to do some pretty interesting things. Well, Enterra has a hair peptide product that makes the scalp healthy and stimulates hair growth, and it really works. I'm using it myself. It's made a pretty big difference. Go check them out. Go to EnterraSkinCare.com. That's E-N-T-A, sorry, E-N-T-E-R-A, SkinCare.com forward slash M-P-M. Then use the code M-P-M and get a discount. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Gonzalo from Alabama. What's happening, Gonzalo? How can we help you? Gentlemen, holy, it's for real. It's happening. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> hey, gentlemen. Uh, so first, uh, I'm super fast with the usual. You guys are awesome. And what I've learned uh, from you guys, my family and I apply every day. So thank you for that. Oh, wow. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Um, and one very quick note, I want to thank uh, Justin. Um, I actually... Uh, was here about a year ago, and Justin, uh, all of you, and Justin gave some great advice to my daughter oh. um, that she uh, was starting gymnastics, she was uh, working to get in shape, and the advice you guys gave, she can do backflips and handstands and things of that nature now. So thank wow. you. Wow, that that's awesome. That's incredible. That's Justin cool, never man. gives that's good advice. That's great to hear. <laughs> yeah. one, one, yeah. You just don't so listen. One time. So there yeah. you, I, I there you go. I all the okay. time. Okay. <laughs> So um, should I just launch into the question? Yes, yeah, please. let's do it. 
All right, let's go ahead. Uh, so, and I'll read it off uh, just like I sent it to you guys. So I'm a 50, 52 year old dad. Uh, I'm about five foot eight, 195 pounds, just to give you like some, some context, I'm about 18% body fat. Uh, and I feel like I've hit my, my max uh, natural potential, I guess, for growth and aesthetics. Uh, I seem to uh, have peaked when it comes to, I've been running MAPS programs for about almost two years now. Uh, I'm doing the typical anabolic uh, performance aesthetic kind of cycle. Uh, great results. Uh, I was able to uh, improve all my lifts and so forth. But in the last year or so, I feel like I've, uh, I'm kind of like spinning my wheels a little bit. Uh, I'm not complaining. Still, in, I feel like the best shape of my life. But I wanted to see there, uh, if there's a way uh, with my current goals, which are to drop uh, from that 18% body fat to maybe a 15% would be, uh, would be nice. And then add some specific size or uh, pay attention to some of the aesthetics, right? Um, and see if I can bring some of that uh, and fine tune it. But my question is, <clears throat> how do I go about meeting those goals and how do I fine tune MAPS programming, having run it uh, as written uh, so uh, a few times, what can I do uh, to better improve those goals or to fine tune those goals? Very, very straightforward uh, question. The answer is pretty simple. Um, so first off, you're 18, you want to get down to 15, very doable, very, very doable. Now, here's the thing about getting down to 15, especially when you get down below 15 towards 12 or 11, is a lot of times the areas that you want to focus on reveal themselves as you get leaner. Um, going from 18 to 15% is pretty visible. 15 is a good body fat percentage. Going from like 15 to 12 really makes a big difference in the aesthetics. And it's all totally doable, okay, for someone like yourself. 195, 5'8", 18% 8, body fat, you have a good amount of lean body mass on your body. So this shouldn't be an issue. Um, it's literally as straightforward as cutting your calories and being consistent. Have you with tracked, a calorie cut. have you tracked calories to get an idea of what your maintenance is? So I am very good about tracking my protein. I always hit that goal, uh, about 180 to 200 grams a day, uh, you know, on average, you know, sometimes a little more, uh, calories. I'm very, I know that I'm, I know that I'm within probably 3,000 to 3,300 calories a day. Oh, wow. oh, yeah. And I say that, I say that because uh, if I reduce 500, say, for a week or two, uh, I can see the drop, you know, <laughs> and then if I increase, I can, uh, well, I don't bulk too much nowadays. Um, I, and to be fair, I have a, I lost a bunch of weight when I started this journey. So I'm very cautious about bulking. I'm, I'm extremely uh, attentive to that, right? Yeah. I would say go on a cut um, until you get down to about maybe 14% body fat or 15 if you're happy there, and then go and do a slow bulk. And that's that's it with the, with the, as far as the body fat percentage is concerned. As far as your workout question is concerned, it's right. because you followed the program so many times, it's as easy as taking volume away from certain body parts and adding it to the body parts you want to focus on. That's it. So what are the areas okay. that you want to focus on specifically? So lats and biceps, uh, I'm kind of like, a, I guess I'm kind of like a reverse Adam in that like my legs grow without even thinking. And then uh, my upper body's just, man, it's just, uh, you know, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. so, so yeah. You can literally kind of you take some volume away from your lower body workouts and add yeah. it to your back uh, workouts. Yeah, and, it. yeah, and maybe a little bit of bicep, but the extra back work will go to your biceps also. So that's pretty much it. So you can literally take, if you took five sets away from your legs for the whole week and added it to back and maybe, you know, maybe four sets to back, one set to biceps or two and two, that's all you would have to do. Really. What, what programs do you have of ours? I have, uh, we have uh, suspension, which was the first one. That was the Justin's recommendation for the daughter. Then we have anabolic performance and aesthetic. Uh, and my wife is currently doing uh, MAPS 15, which we also own. Uh, by the way, she nice. also in the last year has lost over 70 pounds. She's wow. five foot four. Wow. Uh, wow. 70 pounds and put on and, and she is deadlift. She weighs, uh, I shouldn't say how much she weighs, but she's 
small, but she just <laughs> did her first over 200 pound deadlift. Wow. Like last wow. Week. wow. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. That's killer. Let me ask you a question, Gonzalo, because it sounds like your whole family has been on this incredible journey. How transformative has it been for your family to go from, you know, to, to lose weight, to incorporate exercise in this get way? strong. I mean, has it, has it just been transformed? Yeah. Okay. Life changing. It has been absolutely life changing. Uh, seeing uh, our health improve, our energy level to keep up with the kids. I mean, it has been a transformative experience. That's no awesome. other way to, to describe. Excellent. I would, I would actually like to give you Map Strong, and I think Map Strong would do you well for your goals too. There's oh a, God, for back, yes. great idea. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, oh, I think yeah. that would be a great between the the calorie recommendation that Sal said, and then running Map Strong. That's a great. I think you're going to see some great results. Map Strong, you get back yeah. development. Yeah, okay. back with that. There, yeah, I love it. All right, uh, one uh, another thing, and it's sort of related in the. Um, since I do seem to to gravitate towards kind of staying around the same way, now that you've given me strategy, I have a strategy to follow. Um, one of the things that I've noticed related to this is like, for example, I've hit as far as the big lifts, like what I, I've hit my PRs, if you will, uh, in the last year or so, but now I am a little bit older at 52. Should I, when I do something like strong, should I go for it like, you know, try, should I, assuming strong is exactly what it sounds like, <laughs> to get really strong, uh, should I be aiming to improve those PRs as I go through this journey? Should you, that be something you, also? We, you want to train as if you're aiming that way, but you also want to be cognizant of the fact that you are reducing your calories and you're more than likely going to lose some strength very little okay. so you're training as if i want to be strong so you're yeah. you're pushing the intensity you're trying to to stretch yourself but also don't beat yourself up because you have to lighten the deadlift yeah. by 25 pounds that's not a big deal because we're in a calorie deficit so you got to know that if you're not feeding your your body a surplus of calories the likelihood that you're going to get especially at our age as long as you've been lifting yeah. the likelihood you're going to get strong you might because there's going to be unique exercises in there that you've never done. For example, mm -hmm. like a, a snatch grip deadlift is not a common exercise that people do. Yeah. Your first time doing that, uh, you might have to really lighten it up. And then you might see yourself get stronger through the program. That might happen. Yeah. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry about it if you saw yourself not get stronger. Yeah, here's that's the thing. beauty and the novelty of these programs too, is it's like you're learning a new skill with that. You can come back and revisit some of these like major lifts that you've had PRs in again and see how that affected it. A lot of times like refocusing that attention elsewhere, you know, you're going to fill in a need of, of a strength and stability uh, that you wouldn't have got otherwise, which then you'll see how that, that translates. Yeah. When it comes to safety, Gonzalo and strength, if you can perform an exercise with good control and stability, you own that movement, okay? It's safe. Right. It's safe, period, end of story. Where it starts to become a problem is when you start to lift weight that is so heavy that if your form deviates by a half a percent, you can hurt yourself. Only you can determine what that looks like, okay? So, you know, for me, getting my deadlift above about 530 pounds, it's just not worth, it's not worth the squeeze, right? The juice isn't worth the squeeze for me. If I... I mean, could I get it up? I can. I could push it, push it, push it. But what am I going to get for adding 70 pounds in my deadlift? Not much. And then my form goes off a little bit. The injury risk is kind of high. So that's the game that you want to play as you get older is, okay, is it worth chasing the strength gains with this particular exercise? Or can I just slow down the reps? Can I pause the reps? Can I pick different exercises and challenge myself in different ways? Gotcha. That sounds phenomenal. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, let's 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 do this. You got it. Man. All right. So, map strong. Cut your calories. Perfect form and technique with your exercises. No problem. You'll drop the body fat. No problem. Yeah. Circle back too. I'd love to hear how it goes. Okay. We'll do. I'm uh, I'm fairly active in the in the forum in the FB forum. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'll be glad to uh, put some updates and some stuff in there. Please, please uh, got it, you man. Yeah. Check out. Appreciate yeah. that, Gazelle. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, gentlemen, thank you. It's been amazing as always. And, uh, and yeah, keep doing what you guys do because it is awesome. And like I said, life changing and transforming. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Good work with your family. Right. Keep it up. Thank you. Yes, sir. Way to lead, man. You know, um, I, I asked them that because, uh, people think, oh, you're more fit. You know, that's great. You know, the, 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 inf the impact it probably has on their mood, on their outlook on life, their conversations, their connections, the fact that they're all doing this journey together, 
for a family to do this together is just exceptional. And the fact that him and his wife, yep. you know, it's funny. Here's the, here's what the data shows. When you have a couple that is, has poor health, they, their rate of divorce goes up. When you have a couple with poor health and one of them gets healthy and fit, the rate of divorce goes up. Mm -hmm. When both of them together get fit and healthy, the rate of divorce goes down. Plummets. The journey together and the improvement in health, it, 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 it actually increases the satisfaction of the relationship and marriage. So when I hear couples do that, I love it. Well, it's a clear indication that both parties are growth minded, right? They're yeah. both seeking That's to right. improve themselves. And I, that, I think that would carry over in all aspects of life, right? So if you have a partner who's willing to put the work in and, and improve themselves and yep. you both are on that same page, the, the likelihood that you're going to grow stronger together is much higher than if one is growth mind and the other one doesn't give a shit. Right? Totally. Our next caller is Dory from California. Hi, Dory. How can we help you? Hi, guys. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Um, you've been in my ear holes constantly the last 10 months. I have a three-year-old and two twin daughters. So in order to kind of keep me sane watching <laughs> them, I just kind of have an ear pod in my ear all the time. So thank you for all of that. It's been awesome. very, very yeah, we're nice. here for you. Thank you. Um, so my question is, I'm a high school yoga teacher, and I am really wanting to change the perception of yoga at my school and kind of really broaden the the whole program out because currently it's about five sections within a PE class. And my, my coworker and I were really hoping to expand the program, not only within our school, so that not just a certain population end up taking yoga, um, but so that, you know, middle school, elementary school, everybody kind of sees the value of yoga. And so we're thinking that if we can really tap into like the coaches and the athletes specifically at my school to get them to really see the value of yoga, then we could maybe really start to permeate the rest of the school. Cause I feel like if we could buy in from them, but currently a lot of the coaches are, and even the athletes themselves are kind of old school in the sense of they're like, Oh, yoga, that's like wimpy or that's like a nap class or something like that. And so I'm just, so I sort of have two questions like a, how do you think I should approach the coaches so that they see, so that I don't feel like I'm just nagging them and then they're thinking that they're doing me a favor by like, okay, fine, you could like lead my my lead my guys in a in a in a flow sometime, um, but really then seeing like, wow, this is actually working. You know, I'm thinking like mobility drills and things like that, not full like I wouldn't do them like a vinyasa flow because I know. They do weight training. They do all that. So I'm thinking much more of like the mobility aspect because they're very stiff. And then two, do you maybe have any recommendations as far as maybe like five to 10? I don't know. Just like a number. Of, I know a number of drills that you think could work across the sports. Specifically, I'm thinking football, baseball, kind of the big ones, basketball, probably. Um yeah. So those are just my questions. I know that I, I'm an English teacher. I taught that for 15 years before yoga. So I understand the art of argumentation and connecting <laughs> to my audience's values. I just don't know these coaches' values. So yeah. I just don't know, like, how do I reach them? How do I get them to, I don't know. How would you go about yeah, this? Yeah, that's a- Here's why. I, I love this. <laughs> I, I love this because this is a struggle that every fitness coach has. And the struggle is, how do I sell- what I know effectively enough so the other person wants to try it and follow it. Um, now, yoga is, when it comes to a practice, a structured practice for mobility. Now, I'm going to, this is how I define mo mobility. And Dory, how long have you been listening to the show? Uh, probably the last five months or so, but I've been kind of okay. going back. I listen to probably like 10 episodes a day. Oh, wow. Cool. Okay. So, yeah. so mobility is not just flexibility, mobility is your ability to connect to and control a particular range of motion. Improving your mobility means you can connect to a larger range of motion, okay? Mm -hmm. So how does that benefit athletes? Well, they now have strength, power, and speed that's accessible mm -hmm. from larger ranges of motion, from different and positions. Range strength. Yes, so if you're fo in football and you gotta turn and twist and someone hits you, if you can summon strength from greater ranges of motion, from areas you couldn't before, not only does that prevent injury, it makes you faster. It improves agility and strength. The reason why yoga is a great practice for this, you know this as an instructor, really good yoga instructors, it's not passive. When you're in the poses, you're, gr you're, you're grounding, you're activating, you're pressing your feet out, you're reaching up, you're, 
you're connecting to quote unquote stretches or poses. You're not just passively stretching. Now there is a form of yoga called yin yoga. That's very different, but traditional flow even, or other types of yoga, you have to, if you really do it right. And I've ton, I've taken yoga with instructors who are really good at this. They teach you how to activate and connect. You're not just sitting there passively. And that improves what's called functional flexibility or functional mobility. So when you talk to these coaches, you can, you can literally explain to them and say, look, just being flexible is not good. In fact, flexibility can make you unstable if you don't have strength. What I do is I teach as the way I teach yoga is I help people connect strength to flexibility. So your athletes are going to be able to summon strength and power from positions that they normally couldn't before. That's how I would sell it to the yeah. coaches. Okay. I think that, uh, that, I like that. Thank you. Yeah. And I think too, and I, I, I can identify with this in, um, when I was working with high school athletes and also too, I was trying to help out like, um, the girls soccer team, volleyball, you know, water polo. Like there was a lot of interest of like, how do we get these kids in the weight room? How do we get them all interested in, you know, training consistently? Um, and two, I wanted to make sure that, um, you know, the prerequisites were there. They're able to move their body. Well, they're able to control their body and all this stuff instead of recreating the wheel for you in terms of like what you're trying to structure, to present to these other coaches, we actually put a lot of time uh, in simplifying a way to kind of test uh, these end ranges. Uh, and, and with our compass tests, it was a very easy uh, way for for me to structure it in a way where we could use a wall, we could use just uh, a PVC pipe, um, and we could do three different movements that reveal a whole lot in terms of like how well their body was able to move and connect. And from there, you can sort of provide a lot more of that instruction in terms of like whether it's ankle or hip focused or shoulder focus, um, you know, how to improve uh, that connectivity, how to, how to increase the range of motion, how to gain strength and stability uh, around those joints. But to test them right away first, I think that that can get uh, the coaches' uh, minds wrapped around uh, the significance of it, and also too to to, to have to, to kind of reveal where the athletes may have some deficits uh, in, in terms of uh, accessibility or you know their their tightness. And so, it, from a performance perspective, I think is you know the the best way to pitch. Uh, any any like mobility or, or flexibility or yoga poses uh, to 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 get more buy in because this is this is going to improve your ability to generate strength. This is going to improve your ability to be explosive and 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 uh, react and and be faster and like all these benefits uh, revolve around how well you're connected to your body. That's yeah. in our that's in our Maps Prime program. Do you have any of our programs, Tori? I have anabolic. Okay. Well, so Maps over. Prime we, is we what he's referring to. We'll send that to you. Yeah, I think. Oh, what, thank you. I think the point that Justin is making is incredibly important because I was sitting here and I, I was actually lost for like how I was going to advise you here because I can I can only imagine how difficult and what a challenge this would be to convince a couple meathead coaches that yeah, yeah. you have something to offer for them to be better at what they do. Right. Like I could just imagine the ego that is in the way of, of delivering that. And the only way yeah. I would feel like I could get through if I'm you is like, I've got to be able to show something tangible that these, these players will either one feel it and see it immediately and so what I what came I was thinking before Justin gave the test idea, which I think that's brilliant, is like I'd want to get like a you know either the the popular kid on the baseball team or one of the athletes and show him one or two moves before he goes to batting practice or before he goes to sprints so he can feel the translation of look at when we did this this you know rotational mobility move for you and then feel how the ball felt flying off your but like I would want to be able to show them that so they could yeah. feel Cause that cause effect right yeah. so they could then then they could go do the selling for me of like whoa you know i just spent some time with miss dory and boy i can feel it. like that to me would be the the key to get in but what justin's suggesting is is another great way to do that right is by testing these kids on prime and they're they're going to be able you're going to see it's going to be very obvious there'll be some of these movements they're just going to fail miserably at or they won't be able to do and then you literally can take them through one or two mobility movements that will improve that and then you can turn around and retest them and they'll see that they will be better 
at those movements. So I think that's going to be key. Another, I'm, uh, I know the coach is slipping my mind right now. Is it Eric Cressy, who's the baseball mm-hmm. yeah, coach Eric that does Cressy. a lot of mobility yeah. stuff online? Yep. Yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah. yeah so he's got. He, I'm pretty sure he's got a a, a pretty good uh, YouTube channel that that's specific to baseball players. Uh, I know Joe DeFranco is really good with football players. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, maybe diving through some of their stuff. And Mike Boyle is another good one. Yeah, yeah, Mike Boyle. So Mike Boyle, Joe DeFranco, Eric Cressy, very hyper focused on football and baseball players. They do a lot of mobility stuff. They they explain specific challenges that these athletes have, and then what. Uh, mobility moves they can do to improve that. Uh, maybe utilizing them, you know, maybe if you're bringing it because they already have, they're already a known authority in the in the sports world space, and maybe that's your in, you know, of like, hey, I just wanted to show you something, that, and then be able to teach them that. Um, those are some ideas I have too. Yeah, it's it, yeah. Look, if you again, um, if you differentiate flexibility with mobility and define it, and say, look, I'm going to get your your athletes to get stronger in deeper and longer ranges of motion. It's going to make them faster. It's going to improve their performance and definitely uh, reduce the risk of injury. Uh, you know, by now coaches know that static stretching is not a good idea before um, hard athletic performance. And they know this because now we have studies. So what they do now are what we call dynamic stretches or dynamic warmups. Well, dynamic warmups are attempting to do what you could probably do better, which is in connect improve connection to deeper ranges of motion. That's all dynamic, you know, stretching is. So that's really the way I would position it is I'd say, look, I can make your athletes mm-hmm. stronger in deeper ranges of motion through tension with mobility. These are all buzzwords that coaches like, like, because when they think yoga, they don't think necessarily strong or performance, but if you present it in that way, I think they might perk up a little bit. Yeah. And just to get inspiration about what we're talking about with using our, our, programs. Um, Adam and I both did webinars, different webinars. One, uh, MAPS Prime webinar. Uh, I go through with Doug, actually, the the actual tests. Uh, and so you can kind of go through that and see like how we break that down and then where you can fit in uh, certain yoga poses and things to highlight. Uh, and then also the way Adam like structured this workout is basically like a kin stretch workout where, you know, it, it kind of covers the bases of, you know, ankles, hips and shoulder. And uh, it kind of goes through the gamut of very effective uh, stretches to include. Yeah, we'll send we'll send uh, Maps Prime to you. So you'll have that. And then we'll send you links for those two webinars so you can watch them both instruct on, on how they should be done. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That's yeah. can be really helpful. I'm I'm excited. Good, to good luck, Dory. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. We'll change their minds. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great day. You got it. This is like a this is like a, the beginning of a cool movie, right? Like you watch a movie. Yoga instructor tries to teach oh, bro. <laughs> football team. I, I mean, like, oh, got, she's not going to show it's, up. It's yeah. it's a pretty big task. I'm yeah. glad you guys went first because I'm like I was kind of lost for words on like because right away I just think of like yeah right dude a coat of football baseball coach and the yoga teacher comes up to me know. and tell like. Dude, it was hard enough being in inside. And yeah, you had the authority, I, yeah, and you don't look You're, like, and you look like you, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Imagine exactly. that's why. That's why I was like, no way, dude. Justin already had enough heart, like heart, but you know. So I like extending this conversation for her because I didn't want to go back and forth because I know you, Sal. You like think of like you got to sell it, but it's like fuck. You could sell it all you want. These fucking guys aren't. They're gonna need to see it. Yeah, yep. they need to like. You need to be able to. Go show a kid or two yeah. a couple movements, and then he goes and hits the ball and goes, "Whoa, yeah. I felt that!" Yeah. Or take off running, and go like, "Ooh, I felt like they need to be able to feel yeah, something." And take one or two athletes, you just hyper focus on for a while. That's to your right. point, yeah, yeah, so that, be, that would work. Good luck. I mean, just because these guys are, I just can't imagine a coach being open minded enough to do that. And then the other angle again, like I said, the the Eric Cressy, the Mike Boyles, the Joe DeFranco's. Those guys are already authority she in the sport. You might be able to just position it like this. Like, hey, let me do your warm-up next practice. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, I think a coach might be okay with that. You know? Yeah. A lot of coaches, are they don't they don't like warm-ups. They're bored with them. So maybe, maybe hey, let me do the warm-up for your next practice. Yeah. Well, it depends. Yeah, they're very control freaks. <laughs> really. Yeah, I don't they know. They have everything Bro, like you, Yeah, I was going to say, could you imagine it? To you're a system. football coach. You're, you're interrupting their system. The yoga PE yeah. teacher comes to you and says, can I do your football players' warm-ups? Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, let me step yeah. aside. It's- <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a task. Yeah. She can she can do it if uh, you know. It just it take it's gonna take some time. So it's not like as long as she doesn't bring like the incense and the you know. <laughs> well, you know, it, we're the other part is I don't know if for any of these coaches. Sometimes you get like uh, coaches that are in their mid to late twenties or early thirties. They still play a little bit, and so being able to sh show yeah. the coach yeah. so he feels it, mm -hmm. you know, and then feels a difference when he goes to swing the bat or throw the ball or do something, and then maybe he can we get had a coach actually tell us that. Uh, what was this? What did he say? Deer doesn't warm up. It yeah, deer don't off. stretch. Yeah, I was like, oh my I, god! Oh my god! Even my college coach used to say that. Yes. Like, cringe yeah. like, every single time. You see people drop like flies during the season. I'm like, yeah, great philosophy, bro. It's really working out. Our next caller is Brandon from Georgia. Brandon, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Pretty good, man. What's up, man? What's going on? Good. So before I start, um, you know, just the usual. I just wanted to say uh, thank you guys for everything. I've been listening to you guys for like five or six years now i'm 23 so i started listening to you guys around when i was 17 or 18 and so you guys have given me a lot of knowledge um in my fitness journey but not only that but also <clears throat> being 23 not to get too deep here i didn't really have a father figure growing up so listening to you guys' stories about um you know how you handle your kids and like especially now that i'm getting older into being you know, transitioning into being like an actual man, uh, you guys have taught me how to be a good man, not just a good man, but also a good father. So, I mean, I'm, I'm way, I'm way far from having a kid, but, you know, thanks to you guys listening to you guys' stories with your kids and how you treat them and how you just go about being a father. It's, uh, it's giving me a lot of insight for when it's my turn to do that. And so thank you guys. Huge for that. Amazing. Yeah, it's a awesome. huge compliment. Thank you. Bro. Very humbling. How can we help you, man? So I have a few questions and I feel like questions one, and I have three questions, but I feel like questions one and two kind of tie into each other. Um, so I'll just kind of go off on them. So um, basically to kind of give a little bit of a background, uh, I've been active since I was a freshman in high school. So uh, since I was 14 years old, I did wrestling cross country and track. Um, with those being super high intensity, like cardio sports, I was always at a super low weight. And then especially with wrestling, you know, having to stay at that low weight, um, fast forward, I get out of high school and then I start, uh, weight training actually. And then, you know, I start gaining weight and everything like that. So I've been weight training since I was about 17 or 18. I'm 23 now. Um, I competed in powerlifting twice. Um, at my peak strength, I was 130 pounds. My max squat was 375, bench was 265, and deadlift was 465. Wow. Um, yeah. Last time I competed was in 2021. I actually recently, last week, just signed up for another powerlifting competition coming up in February. So I'm about 16 weeks out. Um, and so as far as like my training goes, I've always switched to more of a power building style of training. You know, still focusing on staying strong in the big three. Um, so with that, with all that being said, my first question is, is um, calories have always been a struggle for me and I've always naturally been a skinny kid. Uh, so it wasn't until like this year, like starting in January, end of last December that I really started like my first actual bulk. I was always kind of like maintain, main gaining, but this was last year was the first time I started my first bulk. And I went from 132 to 149 in like six to seven months from like January to August. Wow. So I do really, so listening to you guys' podcast and like being health conscious myself, I do a really, really good job at eating like whole foods. Uh, but um, I want to eat more so that I can gain more weight. But like eating any more food than I do now just feels impossible considering like, like I said, it's literally like all whole foods. I don't eat like any like frozen foods, processed foods, junk food, anything like that. Um, and I, I also don't have too much time to stop and eat at work because I'm a server at nights. And then during the day, I'm a photographer at a studio. So I am like on the floor. Um, so I don't know. What advice would you guys to have to get more calories in? Do you know what your body fat percentage is at, Brandon? Um, I don't know. If I had to guess, it'd probably be around like maybe 17 okay. percent like i can i can still see veins um i've definitely gained a lot more weight um but I, yeah i'm still like the abs are slowly disappearing but you can still see veins when oh. i have like a bump and everything like well, that. Doug just pulled you're, up a picture you're, you're leaner you're, yeah you're, you're like 14 yeah, yeah so okay so there's a couple couple ways you can approach this all right one is this is when adding either a hyper palatable meal <clears throat> 
or a shake can be very valuable. Okay. So that's one approach. The second approach is to go on a cut and then go back on a bulk. And what that does is it does resensitize your body to calories. It does resensitize your metabolism a bit. Your metabolism is fast. I mean, you're eating, you know, at a body weight of 149 pounds, you're eating about 3000 calories a day. Uh, I, I get it. Like adding 500 calories, even if a shake is going to feel like you're stuffing yourself. So if you go on a cut for like six weeks and drop maybe three, 4% body fat, then go back and reverse it. What you'll get are these kind of like these gains that come from a metabolism that slowed down a little bit. And, and, and the fact that you resensitize your body. Now you said you're a naturally skinny kid. That might be scary to you to try to go on a cut. But when you come out of it, you're going to get some gains in strength and muscle that are going to feel amazing. It's the most anabolic I've ever felt my entire life was coming out of a cut. It's like my, it's like your body's a sponge and you just want to build at that point. And then 3000 calories after a cut all of a sudden becomes super anabolic. So, and, and it's just what happens when you stay in a bulk or a cut for too long, the body does adapt after a while. And it's almost like it just doesn't want to react. And so even someone who's cutting for a long time, we often have them do a bulk for a short period and go back to a cut. So I think a cut for six weeks or so, then go back on the bulk. I think that's a great option. The other option, like I said, would be a shake. Add a 500 calorie shake to what you're doing at the end of the day. And that'll probably put another three to four pounds of muscle on your body. I, I agree with the, your first advice. I think that's spot on. And I, I wish... I wish I understood this when I was your age. Um, I was still trapped in the, was super insecure about being skinny and small, that there was no way someone could convince me to do a six week cut. Like yeah. I just, that, that the thought of, you know, losing 10 pounds that it was so hard to add to my body just seems so scary. And I'll never forget when I finally went on my first cut of my life, which wasn't until my late twenties. And I had, I'll never forget losing like 10, 15 pounds and leaning out and struggling with it, like insecure wise, like, oh my God, I'm getting small. And like, I just know I had, I, I was getting ready for prepping for doing a show right before I'd ever done anything. Like, I just want to see if I were to compete, what it would be like. And so I knew I needed to get shredded. And the irony was I started to have people walk up to me and tell me that, you know, have known me for, oh my God, bro, you're getting huge. And I'm like, what? I'm losing weight. I've lost 15 pounds and I feel skinny. I'm not filling my t-shirts out, but people were complimenting me like I was bigger. And thank God for that, because that's what helped keep me focused on. Okay. I'm obviously don't look like to everybody else. Like I'm shrinking. I'm going to just keep going this direction. And then when I reversed and went back the other direction to a bulk, boy, the, the, it was easy to yeah. increase the calories. The weight came on. And when the weight came on, it, it got allocated right to building muscle. It was like the best thing I ever did for it's myself. It's a great feeling. It is. And it's the hardest part will be psychologically fighting through it when you have been the skinny kid who's always tried to put on weight. And you probably, for the first time in your life, feel like you've got some decent size to you. And then here we are telling you, go the other direction, get lean again, get smaller. Uh, trust the process. If you do that for six weeks, you, you trust what we're telling you. It'll be one of the best things you ever did when you reverse and go the other direction again. Yeah, no, definitely. I was definitely the, always the one to like, it kind of like the opposite of like, when you like have a, somebody who wants to lose weight and you put them on like a bulk to like speed up. I was like, never like, I don't like ever want to go on a cut to the yeah. point where I was like, I didn't even like, I tried to, I tried my hardest not to expend as much calories, like during like no cardio at all. Like, just like, I always wanted to, I was basically have been like trying to bulk for like the last like six years. Yeah, and like the right. thought of like, a, uh, Brendan, uh, you, Brendan, you're me and Adam. Yeah, it's a hundred percent. Literally this advice is perfect. Literally six week cut. You don't have to, not, don't be aggressive about it. You know, like, like a 500 calorie deficit, 600 calorie deficit, six weeks consistently ignore your ego because it's going to freak out because you're going to drop water weight right away. Right away, you'll drop four pounds on the scale from water and you're going to freak out. Oh my God. And you'll see some strength loss because you don't have as many calories. Don't freak out. But then when you reverse, it's going to be like, holy cow, I am just building muscle like yeah, ever, like never like before. Sponge. Yep. yep. Now, would you, like I said, I, um, I'm 16 weeks out from a a powerlifting competition at the end of February. Would you recommend doing that now or after I finish? What weight class are you going to compete in? Uh, I have, I have some leeway. So it's, I forgot what it is in kilograms, but I'm 143 right now and I can get up to 148. That's my cap. Oh, so I was just, gonna, I was just going to plan on like bulking up to 148. But like I said, it's been okay. hard to like, really 
this is going to be iffy. Uh, you have 16 weeks. If Okay, then in that case, I would do a short cut, a shorter than six weeks. I would do a cut four, for like- Four weeks. Yeah, four three, weeks. three to four That's weeks. That's still plenty of time. Yeah, three to four weeks, then go back on the bulk and uh, you should get- I mean, here's the deal. If you train really well, you might maintain your strength yeah. uh, during the cut. If you can maintain your strength during the cut, you're going to come out really well when you reverse out three to four weeks from now. We got 16 weeks is plenty of time. That's yeah. still going to be three months of training after and he's both. done the cut. Yeah. yeah. So literally do the cut for four weeks, even though I'd love to see you do it for six, do it for four. When you come out, go to the bulk, do the bulk all the way to the end of the power. Yeah. And then after the, after the power lift you meet, do the six week cut again after that. Yeah. Now don't do this during the cut. Don't think to yourself like, okay, I'm cutting. I got to go burn a shit ton of calories. Don't do that. No. Train like you normally train, maybe even reduce the volume a little bit. Um, and then when you go out of it, you're, you should see some really, you should, you should break PRs within a few weeks post cut po when you get back in the bulk. Okay. And now my second question, it also kind of ties into now with like the training part of it. So considering the fact that I've been working out for like five years now, my newbie gains, I feel like are like long gone and ever, you know, since I stopped powerlifting, but now getting back into it. I found it um, a little bit hard to get back to where I was strength wise to like my peak of it. I'm starting to see the strength coming back since I've been um, basically like studying like um, exercise science and all that. Like I know I basically cut my volume. I would say in half, I usually do like two sets of like six to eight reps on exercises, but like to like failure, like it's more, I'm focusing more on intensity uh, rather than volume. But like my main question is, is like, I'm aware like nutrition has, to, has a huge role to do with it. But as far as training goes, considering how much objective progress I made, is it about time that it take a more like specific approach to training rather than like when you first start off working out, you can pretty much do almost anything and you start making progress compared to like, especially if, as a strength athlete, as you get more advanced, then you have to start doing those like specific things to like really you know, get yourself to add even just five pounds onto the bar, um, and size too. So like, do you feel like I'm at that point where I need to be more specific with my training? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think so. Especially cause you're gonna be doing yeah, a powerlifting be competition. Competing, so yeah. you should be, are you, are you fall? Have you followed our maps power lift? I have it. No, I was, I was thinking about it with this, uh, yeah. Oh, we need prep. to get you on that. All right. Yeah. Done yeah. deal. Yeah. 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 We'll send you that. That's it. You got a yeah. program. Yeah. And follow that, bro. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, it's but this, and also with that, I was just going to ask you guys about like volume. Cause like, that was a huge thing. I usually structure my own. That's, that's going to handle all that for you, bro. Yep. That's why you're going to follow. You've accounted for all. Yeah. That. It's yeah. all, it's all laid out. Yeah, you, you literally up. follow it to a T follow that program to a T mm -hmm. it's got everything figured out for you. You just got to do it. And it's perfect. Cause I think that's it's three, it's 12 weeks long, I believe. Right. Is it 12 weeks? Uh, I believe it is. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. literally do the cut for the four weeks and then start and then that boom, power lift, start, start power, power lift, lift with, the bulk. with the bulk and I'll take you right to your okay. meat. Cool. And then my last question is this is kind of out of power lifting. This is just like generalized training. Um, you know, having listened to you guys for so long, um, and you talk a lot about like functional training. So like, you know, sleds, box jumps, all that kind of stuff. I I've always been like a person where I was like, I was just focused on building muscle and like, I didn't really see functional training as like, oh, that's probably not going to build as much muscle as like I'd want it to. Uh, but now I'm getting into the mindset where it's like, okay, I want to do this for the long term, and I want my body to be as healthy as it can. And so I've been really interested into incorporating it into my routine. But being as my main priority is like building as much muscle and strength as possible, I get worried that, like I said, adding functional training mm -hmm. won't give me as much gains as I'd like. Um, no, that's so a myth. Yep. There's a myth that you have to trade, you know, in the short term. I mean, you, you're, yeah, if you're training functional mobility and, and, and you're working in multiplanar movements, you'll lose a little bit of strength in certain mo in other movements you're not practicing. But in the long run, the improvement in mobility and connection- You're filling in all the holes. It's going to make you bigger and stronger. And, and by the way, perfect program to run after this, right? So mm -hmm. literally run power lift in the- So you're going to cut for four weeks, run power lift in the bulk. When you get out of power lift, go back to a cut and run performance. Mm -hmm. Mass performance. You, yes. You'll be yeah. done. Done deal. Perfect. And that's we, a, it's a and it's a that or symmetry you could do, mm -hmm. but either one of those. I mean, that performance is more performance based stuff in there, and it has unilateral work. So I would put you on performance. That's a perfect program to run after that. 
So mm -hmm. run the powerlift program, then performance. Then when you come back around to your powerlifting training, watch watch how much better you are. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys for everything. That's pretty much all that I had. You got uh, it, man. All right, Brandon. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for calling in, brother. Good luck. Appreciate man. the support. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Yeah, that's my favorite uh, compliment when they say something like that. That's really nice uh, to hear. About mm -hmm. fatherhood. Yeah, just, you know, uh, no, wanting to be a dad now. Like, wow, that's great. Because you don't get a lot of that uh, in the media. No, yeah. I mean, uh, it's so funny. It's like, it sounds counter. But if you all you ever do is bulk, yeah. going on a shortcut will get you more muscle. I wish what do you say? Six years straight? Yeah. You know, yeah. I, bro, I, bro, I went like fucking 12 years I went, straight. I, I oh my God. Oh, yeah. I probably did longer than that. And I, it was so I'm funny. still I, on the bulk. It's yeah. so funny. I, I cut, the, I never <laughs> did just on accident. I never did like a hard, hard cut uh, until I, I think the heart, like when I really did a cut was MAPS Anabolic when, when I created that because I want to look, you know, to put myself on the cover. After that, I was like, what the, like I was building muscle yeah. Like nobody's business. I, I couldn't believe it. I wish someone yeah. got a hold of me at his age Same. and convinced me to do that I because know. it was the best thing I ever did. And I was so stupid to not do that. But again, just shows you how much we are driven by our insecurity mm -hmm. of being skinny because anytime. So afraid of a pound. Oh yeah. Scale. If I had a, if I had just three to five days where I didn't hit calorie intake and I was low and I saw the scale move down a couple pounds, oh, I freaked that's out. That's a bucket yeah. of chicken Panic. from KFC. Yeah. I was then the very next day I was, I was yeah. eating in a massive surplus and back. Like I just, for my whole life, I mean, or most of my life until my late twenties, did I actually do that? Listen, and then I, if, of course you did the cut. I guarantee you had the same thing too. Oh, mm -hmm. You're cutting, you're down 15 pounds. People are like, damn, you're getting bigger. Yeah, everybody's like, man, you look <laughs> jacked. Man, look at I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. I'm small what are you talking yeah, about yeah, listen yeah. i was making chicken breast and tuna fish shakes in the blender yeah that's how bad i was uh, our next next caller is Alyssa from georgia Alyssa, how's it going how can we help you hey guys how are hello, you hello. good how are you this is surreal so sorry i'm a little nervous <laughs> that's all right uh, that's all right adam um, yeah. always i i just need to say thank you and give you all your flowers before i ask my question um my fitness journey has been a wild ride. And if it wasn't for you guys, I would still be probably like harming myself, basically. Like I was that typical, like deficit, like group class, like CrossFit crazy person. And um, you guys definitely encouraged me to fuel myself properly and be a muscle mommy. So yeah, <laughs> right on. Um, very, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like I'm very, very like you guys saved me. So I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Amazing. Yeah. So jumping into my question. Um, so for the last few years, um, I started deadlifting again, like with a straight bar um, in the army, like because I'm in the military still like they have had us use like the hex bar because the fitness test changed, which I know you guys have talked to like other people um, in the service in the army. So um like I stopped using the straight bar for a while and now I'm like really focusing again on using the barbell and pushing my strength, but I've been tweaking my right side. So like every few months it's the same injury and I want to kind of pick your brains on like the appropriate amount of frequency to do like single side stuff. So like I've learned from you guys to do like unilateral training. I'm very familiar with some of the exercises you've recommended to other people who've had like right side QL stuff. Um, but my problem is like, I'll feel good. Three months will go by. I'll tweak it. I'll do the rehab, feel better, deadlift again, tweak it. So it's like, I'm in this vicious cycle and I don't know like what the recommended frequency would be to actually make sure I strengthen myself and I'm healed before jumping back into deadlifting. And so I've been very scared to push the weight. So I can do like 225 for eight and I feel great. And I refuse to go heavier than that um, because I don't want to tweak it. So I don't even know what my potential is. Um, so I, yeah, I guess I just okay. want to hear your thoughts. You said the that. right side. Is this where the SI joint is? You know where that yeah, is? it's like, yeah, it's like, it's, I want to, I want to say, I know ex that it's exactly that, but I'm not hundred percent sure. I feel like it's my right cue, like the, it's like the lower right side. Yeah. I can mm. feel it. Like it's given out, like in the middle of a rep, I'd have to like drop the barbell because I can yeah. feel yeah, that the right side is pulled. That is QL. Yep. 
That's, yeah. That's and I, well. I was like, I couldn't walk after like it no. was bad. And so like, I've mm-hmm. done like Sal, you've recommended like single side bends with a dumbbell. Mm-hmm. I do yep. overhead. I do unilateral, like overhead stuff. Like you do windmills. Um, over my head. say that again. You do windmills. Yeah. Windmills. Like I'm, I have like my little flow of like single sided stuff that I do. Mm -hmm. Um, but I guess I just don't know, like, is this stuff that I can do to prime every single day? Like, could I do single sided stuff in the beginning and the end or like a few times a week? You can, but you can, but because you're so strong, Alyssa, I mean, 225 for eight, you're you're a strong girl. That's great. So because you're so strong, you may need to do a full cycle of only unilateral training before you go back because trying to get your QL to catch up while you're also stressing it with the weight that you can handle, it's probably not ideal. So um, I think a full- Old time strength for her. Old time would be amazing. I think old time would be- Oh my God. You want to talk about strong lateral trunk stability. Just shake it up completely and address what yeah. needs to be addressed. I would I love to, beautiful. I would love to see you do that, especially yeah. being in the military. That'll make you a badass. You'll get even stronger I'm, doing it too, right? And that's kind of like I haven't looked at. I know you guys have described like what old time strength has, and I love that shit. Like I, I use, I like trained. So before I even joined the military, I had a really good mentor and coach who he taught me all of that stuff. He he actually like taught me how to prime properly and like do all of these things. So as when I found you guys, like the things you would say, it resonated so deeply with me mm-hmm. because I had already been doing stuff like that, mm-hmm. but I just needed more structure and guidance for like a legitimate strength training program. Um, so old time strength is right up my alley. Cause it's like stuff that I think would challenge me and help me. But oh, yeah. I, I didn't yeah. know if you guys were going to say symmetry. I didn't know if you were going to say, old, like I did, I had no idea. Like where we were going symmetry. With this symmetry would be good too, but old time. I mean, you're talking about that lateral trunk stability. Yes, it's mm-hmm. going to make you so strong. I mean, we have a look. I got a, a guy that works for me that did old time. So in old time, they're you're doing variations of deadlifts, but not really traditional deadlifts. Anyway, he went back to deadlifts. He had a PR right out the gates. Right out the gates, oh, hit wow. a PR. So. You get really strong hands, incredibly stable and strong core. Mm -hmm. And then your QL, yes. Yeah. (laughs) And then your QL is going to be bulletproof because of all the rotation and loaded rotation exercise. I love that. That'd be perfect for you. I'd love to ask. I'd love to hear how it goes. I'd love to hear how it goes for you. Are you in our forum too or no? So I actually am pissed because I actually just got rid of Facebook. And I, the only reason I was thinking about keeping it was because of you guys. Because <laughs> um, I'm in your hormone. I was, I was in, I'm in, uh, I was in empty hormones. And like, I actually have worked with Transcend because of you guys. I'm like with, I'm working with a specialist with Transcend. Um, and so I was like wanting to stay in the, in the hormones forum, but I don't know if there's any other way to like keep in contact. <laughs> we, I mean, we, I could just. We, we actually have a lot of people that have created like a, like a blank profile just so they have access to, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So they don't even put their, yeah. 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 So it wouldn't be weird for you to do that. A lot of people actually have done yeah. that. If I do that, can I email like Doug or the live email? Like, how do I tell you guys that it's created and yes. that I want to be in the phone? Oh, 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 we'll send you the link and everything. And then once you do the invitation, oh, okay, yeah, you'll be yeah. set. So when I'm ready, I can like go into it. Correct. Okay. Will that work, Doug? Will that work for her to do that? Uh, probably not. So, you need to. Definitely. Uh, uh, so send a message to Jerry. Yeah. Make it attention is at live at mindpumpmedia.com. Yeah. So go to go to live at my the same one that you emailed in here and just inform her that we told you we'd give you the forum for free and that you now have mm-hmm. created a profile. And then Doug will send you a link or she will send you a right. link to get you in. So we need you to create it first before we send the link for it to work. Okay. In but, the meantime, you guys said so I can't really overdo the single sided stuff as like a warm up or like a primer. You, so if like you, if you follow maps, if you follow old time, yeah. just follow the program. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. It's going to give you everything okay. you need. I think again, and there's, there's a point to where mobility is great and it like kind of keeps things in check, but to be able to actually like load these movements and, and to be able to build strength in rotation and have all that uh, overhead kind of stability and support, uh, watch what this does like going into everything. It's, it's one of those things like I, I like mobility. I like stressing that because a lot of people neglect it, but it's just because they neglect these movements that are loaded. Uh, and so, mm-hmm. uh, old time strength is like, it's, gonna address it's the ultimate, like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's stuff that's like, it's going to put your body in positions you're not familiar with, but you're gonna get really strong as a result. Totally. Right. Yeah. I actually, I'm 
this I'm okay. So I ran anabolic twice and now I'm in anabolic advanced right now. And I'm in phase two and loving it. And I'm getting hella strong. Like, it's like, it's crazy. Like advanced is giving me gains that I Beautiful. like need, but I'm also too scared because of this QL issue to like yeah. really push it. And so I just, I want to finish advanced, but it, like, if you guys want me no, to no, no. Jump, jump to old time strength and then go back to that yep, afterwards. Yep. That would be perfect to follow up with. Oh, cool. So go okay, do so I can start advanced all over again. Yes. Like yes. Can, you literally like go, drop, drop that, go right into old timing. Now that's yeah. going to bulletproof that QL. That way, when you go after it in advance and you're going to feel more confident in advance and you're going to see yeah. the game. You'll get better games. Very much of a progressed uh, protocol too. So, yeah. you know, it, it, it takes okay. yeah, each no, one I'm of those really, movements really piece by piece. Yeah. So you'll, you'll get it. And all. if you don't get in the forum with us, you got to follow up. I can't wait to hear how it goes for you. Totally. Oh yeah, for sure. I love that style stuff. So I'll, I'll for sure. I'll make like a very vague blank page with like one picture. And then <laughs> so you guys know, like it's not some creep. I'll at least put one picture. <laughs> all right, I'll have all right. no friends, just mine. Pump. All right. <laughs> yeah, good. That's right. That's, that's right. All the only friend you need. This is like the organic human mind pump I'm talking to, right? Not yeah. the AI version. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real? Okay. Yeah, okay. Real. I'm just making sure I'm this is real. Max real. I'm never yeah, going right. to let a robot <laughs> take my place. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I really appreciate that. Yeah. This is like surreal. So thank you guys so much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Listen, right. we'll send that over to you. All right. Take care. Thank All you guys. Right. Bye. 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 Did you know that uh, we did a, we did one of our episodes for run what I don't know whatever reason one of the edits like, oh he turned my picture flashed out and it was like script and then it came back I think it's an editing thing or something it was like in like Japanese characters yeah, or something yeah, wasn't yeah. it he, it was uh, what was that all like about? Some I think there's some warning that something was missing and that it was in a bunch of different yeah. languages so, so so people on YouTube were like wait is he really there yeah. is that AI yeah. what's going on I'm like oh my god the conspiracy theories <laughs> finally I'm part of one yeah <laughs> anyway she's uh she's gonna see gains from that I'm so glad you said that yeah, she's gonna see gains from perfect that perfect solution oh my gosh she'll yeah. be deadlifting 300 pounds no problem yeah. no I can't wait she's just a just a great person to see go through oh, yeah. that too so it's how cool is that that she actually had a mentor that had already did she say the, that she, yeah. she in her written question she lost 100 pounds when she was 17 17 wow. to 19 oh i didn't read that yeah dude that part. Yeah. so no she's way. she's had some i mean she's had a huge transformation would love yeah. to i would love to know who she is she's so she, strong and it's like already it's like well let's use that strength and reallocate it you know so it's going to benefit the totally, rest of your body totally yeah. yep. look if you like mind pump head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our guides they're free they cost nothing go there you can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 